So Mark, when you are starting a drawing and getting like you got a blank canvas, what what's going through your mind? Do you have like a, a usual routine before you start a drawing? Or you just kind of just send it. Um. Yeah. Well, usually uh, it just depends on what I'm drawing. So y'all can see all that. Everything's good. Everything's good. All right. So everything's good. Okay. Just want to make sure I hadn't done this before. All right. Um. Usually it depends. You know, if I have a certain plan like I you know if I'm doing like a comic book you know I know exactly what I've got to do who I've got to show what what expression they have to do um so there's a lot of preparation to that beforehand uh if it's like a portrait something like that it's uh it might be preparation to um the mic uh it might be preparation of where, where the light's going to hit again expressions and things like that sometimes i start out one way and with, with colors in mind like I, i'm going to draw frankenstein and it's going to be hitting him in blue light by the time i end it it's totally different because things happen on the way and things change so um let me see how big this is so just i go with whatever looks the best think uh I, I usually go by the todd rule of does it look cool does it look cool and uh if it looks cool then it it goes i respect that let me get that a bit bigger what's up i'm hokage i can, ooh, if you're talking i fortunately can't hear you no why do you always have this yeah, problem like yeah, I hope make sure you have voice activity on and not push to talk. But uh, for anyone out there in the audience, this is open format. Come up, ask some questions, just hang out. We are trying to stage format because it's just released. So yes, feel free to come on up and hang out. We're just watching Mark draw. Yeah, about to draw. Yeah, <laughs> everything set up. Okay, all right. Should be able to. Let me get Discord over here. The double monitor setup, super nice. Yep. All right. Let's see what we can do. Oh, um. All right. So this will be audience participation. <laughs> Drawing. Um. Get somebody to tell me a color. Just to give me. A oh, color. all right. Type it out in general chat. Type out a color. You heard him. What are we going with? We got purple from Rogue. Uh, purple, and then give me one another color. Give me another, another color. color. We got green, red, and purple. It seems like the, the, the All green. Right. Well, let's, let's do three. Let's do three colors. Okay. All green, right. Red, and purple. All right. Uh, green, red, and purple. Interesting yeah. combo. Um, wow. Yeah. It was only those three colors, but it was a lot of the same. A lot of people suggested those three colors. Yeah, those are good colors. Those are good colors. So um, I'm hoping everybody has went and picked up their issue. What is it here? Of uh, King Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just so happened to pop up here. Uh, wow. People are, they are selling out, man. I've already heard like uh, three comic book stores have sold out. Having to wow. Read. Congratulations. So, yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh wouldn't that be something if it broke some records and uh uh for like the one you know, if it, if that's another thing with Todd doing these four covers in a month like that, there's a possibility that I could have the top let's just say fifty comic book cut four of the top fifty in one month. I think that would break a record. Right. Wow. Usually you don't have four covers come out in a month, the same artist, right? So uh, that might actually break some records there. So that yeah, you got some more coming up. You, uh, you want to talk yeah, about those? Um, yeah, my uh, my copies are coming. Uh, I think next week of Gunslinger. So Gunslinger must be the next one to come out. I think it's about not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that. Uh, that's the one I think people are looking forward to the most. I don't know. Uh, but I am hearing a lot of people like that freak cover, man. That, that it does look good. Um, Let's see here. I know this looks like nothing, but this is the way things start. Uh, and then it starts looking great. Um, so what was, uh, we got red, we got purple, 
And we got green. Is that it? Yep. All right. Red, purple, and green. Red, purple, and green. All right. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Uh, so, um, so, somebody say something, man. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, I, Get somebody up on the stage. I, I'm trying. Oh, yeah, wait. She's fine. Can you accept now? Hold on. Yeah, get she's fun up there, man. She, she's fun. Come on up. Here, let me invite you. You can't accept that? What's going on? You you broke it, she's fun. But yeah, this is open format. Come on up, ask questions. He's this you, you heard the man, he's uh yeah, I'm he's hearing taking hearing. a we, Yeah, I hear somebody talking. Yeah, we can hear you frisky. Yeah, we can hear you frisky. All right. Hey Mark. So uh we were the, it's frisky. So hey. we were we were talking in the uh, in the chat earlier uh, between Ric Flair and She Spawn, uh -huh. and I I I started asking the question on who they thought the character was for the new Scorch cover, and so everybody started to kind of give their answer or whatnot, but fr uh, but uh, Freak was the answer for Ric Flair and She Spawn. And I was like, yeah, if you guys read um Unwanted Violence and looked at the at the um uh drawings for Freak and that, you would kind of come to the conclusion that you know Freak is gonna be uh the cover for the next one. So it would be Ric Flair and She Spawn that you want to talk to. Those guys they are they're the ones that called it out in the community. So oh, uh, that yeah. we're, we're definitely excited for that uh, new cover coming on. Yep, that is freak. Um I'm just sorry, my, am I yeah, someone's echoing? someone's echoing. Okay, there we go. So no one can accept their invite up on stage. Um okay, so Mark, so whenever you go through um these characters that you went uh, as far as picking the covers for Spawn and Gunslinger and Scorse and whatnot, yep. why uh, why did you pick Jericho and why did you pick Sin and why did you pick uh, uh, Freak in those images? What was the reason that brought you to the to that decision? Uh, I am glad you asked that question. That was a because no one's asked that yet. Um, well. And I guess I'm not giving no trade secrets away because no one told me I couldn't say all this. <laughs> but, um, oops, I thought that was a racer. Um, it was actually, I was, when, when I accepted to do the, the covers, I was told, um, hey, we want you to do the covers. We want you to do, uh, we love your portraits, right? Like my monster portrait stuff. And they wanted something similar to that. They thought they were so eerie looking and everything. Um, but what they decided was they said, uh, we want you to do the, the villains, you know, because I guess most people, when you pick a spawn cover, you're going to do spawn, right? Are you going to do some closer related to spawn? So they said villains are, Hey, villains is fine with me. Love monsters. So, um, they gave me a list. They, they basically said, look, we want sin. We know no matter what you, you got to do sin. That's number one. Um, because he's like the, you know, the big baddie right now that, that's going on. Um, then the second was clown. Um, the third was, uh, I had a little bit of leeway, I think, but I, I believe they gave me a short list and freak was on it. Um, so I picked freak, but I, I want to really say, I really didn't pick him that much. I think somebody, I think that was Thomas, uh, Healy saying, you know, he, he he, I had free uh, wheel on that, but he was like, "Hey, I do like Freak." And I looked at Freak. I saw what Freak was now. I remember when Freak wasn't, uh, you know, dead and came back. So I was like, "Oh, that hair would be really interesting." So I decided Freak. Um, the last one was I could have done. They gave me a choice between Kincaid and Jericho, and uh, Healy was like, man, I would, I really like Jericho though, but I'll let you pick. And I love Kincaid, 
but I was like, well, we already have sin, right, um, in the covers, and that's the human. So I was like, ah, let's go with uh, let's go with Jericho. And there hadn't been much done about Jericho uh, at that time, right? There's the references for what I was given was I think two panels of Jericho. I don't know if you y'all read it, you know, y'all read more than I have. I'm sure. I don't know how much more Jericho's out there, but there just wasn't much reference for him. Uh, CN had some good references, and uh, Freak didn't have many references um, either. Uh, the Freak, so. Um, he had a few, you know, I knew about the, the autopsy scar thing uh, and a little bit about his face. Um, so so he didn't have a lot of references. Um, the clown, uh, actually, what's interesting about that is I drew a clown. No one's seen it. I think I'm going to maybe they'll want to show it when it comes out. I had already completed a cover of clown and it was already accepted. That's what we're going with. And. Then when Spawn Batman came out, Greg Capullo changed the way uh, the little Goonies, what they, that's like a nickname they give them, uh, the little clowns, you know, his little minions. Uh, he changed the way they, uh, they look. And we, we had to go back and, and uh, redo the whole cover, um, which I like better. The second cover so much better than the first one, if you, if you ever see it. Uh, because that was the very first cover I did for them, and I was so nervous trying to get it right because of my colors. I I, I didn't know if when, when you do something like that and you haven't worked for the people before, um, you don't know like what they will accept and what they want. Um, like I do very vibrant colors, right? And I didn't know if they would sit there and go, "No, this is too." Um, this is too vibrant. We don't like this or something. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so it's uh, that one I was so nervous on. It's really weird. If you actually look at all the covers, how I did them. Um, I did them to where, uh, let's see, the, the very first one I worked on was clown, but it was the clown that we didn't use. The second one was sin. And if you notice sin's cover, I didn't go real vibrant colors, right? Uh, he has a whitish background. It's very right. muted. Um, I did show them three or four different backgrounds on that, though, that I made. And they picked that one. It, it did look good. I think that was the right one that they chose. Uh, but then when I had to go back, before I went forward to the freaking stuff, I had to go back and redo Clown. And the clown took me a week or two because it was just the minions getting them the right way and all that. Because they didn't have much reference at, for the new minions at that time. So when I went back and did that, I just did it my way. I was like, look, I'm having so much trouble trying to draw in a certain way. I'm going to do it my way and then let them tell me you got to change this and that. Right. Don't. I didn't want to put words in their mouth like, hey, this isn't right. This isn't right. Let them tell me that it's not right. And then everything everything started gelling then. Uh, it went perfect. Then I then you could see Freak has this big red background and more of what green's hitting him. And then when I did Jericho, uh, which is the cover out right now, uh, right here you go, guys. Comic book stores. Right now. Nice. The, uh, if you notice the on the cover, uh, I went purple, and I had the green, um, and it went right through. No revisions. I had no revision when I sent that in. They went perfect. And uh, wow. they, I'll tell a I'll tell a story on that. I don't think they would get upset with me telling it. Um, it's funny because I was telling it the other night when I was doing the signing. Um, what's funny is when oh, I first you, you there, guys. No, go ahead. Share oh, your story. I thought somebody said something. Um, but anyways, the um, what happened was uh, when I had first talked to uh, the editor-in-chief about doing the Spawn covers, he had told me, hey, you've got to uh, mute your colors a little bit. You know, Todd likes real-world colors. And that scared me because the last job I had did, I did something for Halloween, uh, Michael Myers, and the guy was telling me when I did that, you can only use colors that are in the movie. We don't want you to use any of these weird colors. 
I'm like, what a weird color, right? Somebody showed me a weird color. Um, but I it took two days for him to explain that to me, the the Halloween guy. Because I said, I don't I don't really understand what you're talking about. And he was like, Well, look, if you draw something and it's got green hitting it from one side, you show me that in the movie, or I don't want to I, I don't want it on the image. And I'm like, dang God. All right. You know, you're 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 hiring a guy that's known for colors, and then you're telling them don't use greens and all this kind of stuff. So, anyways, um, let's see here. Okay, um, what I started doing was, uh, uh, okay. T so Thomas Healy tells me, "Hey, we need you to make sure you use real world colors." And I'm like, "What is what is that? I don't really understand what what you're saying." Todd likes, and she, he said, "Well." Todd doesn't like a purple sky. Like, if it's a sky, you know, it should be a sky color like blue. There is no purple sky. And I'm like, okay, got you. And then I'm sitting there thinking when I'm drawing these, I'm like, okay, I'm doing these portraits. They can really be anywhere. They could be in a room of red, right? A room of purple. You know, I'm not really changing the color. So I, I had a hard time with that. And that's what was messing me up at the very beginning was what do I what do I get away with? What colors should I do? And when I did that, um, like I said, I later on I just did what I wanted to do. And what's ironic, somebody pointed out that didn't think about it. They said, well look what the last cover you did was purple. <laughs> I did. It was a purple uh sky basically or whatever background and it was approved. So I just went with what, and then let them mute the colors, you know, if they need to. So that's just the way to do it. Well, good thing tonight you don't have those restrictions, so you can get crazy with color. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll go really crazy. Whoa, what happened? Why did this pop up? Okay. And um, they, uh, they uh, actually shared a post where it kind of gave a radiant diagram or like a, a different um, aspect of the colors or a variation of the colors um, throughout the process and yeah it was, it was really cool so I tell you what for me not only was your color aspect uh, in my opinion really unique but with the free character you know what was it that made you choose a uh, image where a character was licking a knife you know if you were to if you were to think of a crazy aspect of a character like that would be something that would you know entice me as somebody that would be crazy enough to cut their own tongue you know like what was it that made you choose that you know image of the knife and the depiction of the freak that way um well let me let me uh hold on oops let me show you this real quick when i had this pulled up this is actual the cover i turned in so it's not muted that much right you're gonna it's gonna be muted for printing just because you draw digital you know what i mean like the the bright green yeah. do not transmit well when it's printed i noticed that from cards and stuff so they did not change it that much um if you look at it. i mean it's actually pretty much the almost the same colors so um yeah with the freak um let's see the freak you do i have that one is he to the left or right i can't really remember this is this might be the freak I turned in, and wow. it's uh, yeah he's got the knife right there. I want to say it's is it flipped? I can't remember if I flipped it. They flipped it, um, but I will show you guys and show over here something that's kind of special with that. Here is a different color version that I did that looks pretty cool too. Wow, I would go with either one, but um, the red brings out the hair a little bit more right um oh do you see the knife in the blue one right this uh there was actually going to be a uh you can almost see it there i was going to have it be a person's face in it do you see that yeah wow and then yeah, it was, that was actually spit dripping off the knife that was the original we didn't like the knife uh, I went, this wasn't really finished yet. I was gonna, that was kind of a mock up of the, the blade, and I didn't like it 
Uh, it blended in too much. You couldn't really tell it's a knife if you just glanced at the cover. Uh, then I took that face away. I want to see if, let's see, that's... This might be a brighter version or something. This is a, it's got another number on it, but it's about the same. But uh, me and Healy worked on that, and he came up, uh, Thomas Healy came up with, hey, make it rusty. And I went, that's it. That'll make it stick out. And that's what, what it did, um, which I love it. I love this now. I do miss the spit on it, but when I tried to do the spit, it it blended in with the rust. You couldn't really tell it. Mm, yeah, it had been too much. So didn't do the spit on it. But um, you know, maybe next time. But why did I uh, do that? Okay, that was the third cover I did was Freak. So let me get back over here and do this. Um, and I wanted something because I okay, if you notice this gun the uh, gunslinger cover, uh clown has the cat, right? So uh there's a cat in it. And uh, I wanted something. I wanted something different, something to make you go, wow, that's not just a portrait. And the freak is a, a crazy character, right? And he does have a knife sometimes. If you look back when he was human, you know, back in the old days. Um, so I was like, well, I, uh, I want to give him something. And I thought about a knife. And then the, the, it's almost the same thing as the cat. I wanted something for you to look at and and make your brain go, why? What is he about to do with that? Right? What's he about to do with that knife? Is he about to cut off his tongue? Yeah. Is he about to hurt me? Um, that's, you there the, that's the freak. Yeah, that's you the freak. Captured it perfect. You captured it perfect. So uh, it's probably one of the best. Uh, I, I I tell you the the last. Um, uh, comic with uh, the unwanted violence was a pretty cool depiction of the freak. You know, it really reminded me uh, if you're a fan of Grant of uh, Greg Nicotero, and oh yeah, love and, Greg. Like that, it, it, if it was me, I I would like. Oh, that is totally Greg Nicotero right there. Like that is the depiction of what I would think. So hey, I'm telling you. Um, I am a true fan of your your style, and I'm excited about um, you know seeing a lot of your comic books with the with the Spawn universe. So you know the the depiction of the freak you really captured it on that one. Oh, I appreciate that, man. That's that's turned into my fa one of my favorites of it. I mean, I I do like Jericho, but if I had to pick right out of those four, my two favorites. Freak and the Clown, by by far. Uh, they're more animated too. But Jericho, if you think about, if, if y'all know Jericho much, if you think about it, I couldn't have done something like that with him. It's just the character. That's why I did him the way I did, where he's in the center and he's like more dignified. Because when I talked to them about Jericho, they were saying he's this and he's this and he's this. And I was like, what I'm getting in my head is if y'all know Spider-Man, if y'all keep up with Spider-Man, I'll remember the Rose uh, back in, I know back in the eighties, he was around. He was a guy dressed in a white suit with a, a purple hood. Right. Um, and that's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, is he, and that's what I asked him. I said, so is it kind of like that? And that's kind of what they gave me. So then that to me, I, I couldn't do a lot with Jericho. But more than what I did. I, I'm very happy with the cover. I think it turned out great. Though some people are saying it's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Which it tickles me, you know, but I'm now it's not Freddy Krueger. Very limited character. So I mean, I think you I think you really did a good job as far as like, hey, I mean, it, it it's one of the few times he's been you know, depicted anyway. So uh, you yeah. really did a good job with that one. I tell oh, you what, sure. Mark, uh, you you mentioned before, hey, wait till you see the cover in person. And I will tell you, um, I picked up this last comic and in person, it's a really phenomenal cover. Not to say that, you know, all the other covers in, in the Scorched and, and Gunslinger and King Spawn uh, universe is not out of the park because there's a lot of great artists out there, but it was just a really 
cool depiction or a, uh, it's just something different. And you've never seen Jericho like on the cover. That's not something right. that you would typically see. So, hey, again, you really did a good job. And I hope to see you uh, uh, back again. And I hope Thomas and, and Todd take a look at, at, at you again. And uh, we get to see you uh, more and more. So good on you. Man, I, I appreciate that, dude. I uh, really do. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I understand exactly what you're saying. I was watching some videos the other day and people were like, I bought some people buy spawn just for the covers because of the two ninety nine price, right? Todd's amazing charging two ninety nine for those books, right? For the quality of the, the cover alone, like the, what it, the stock on it is just amazing. And people say like, oh, you know, if you're going to buy a book just for the cover, buy Spawns. Spawns has some of the best covers. Uh, he, Todd's great and Thomas are great at going out and getting these great uh, artists to do covers for them. So to be in the, faci the vicinity of that is just amazing to me to be able to go, wow, I was able to do something that uh, that all these other great artists do. Um and, and to hold my own against them. And I'm like, that it's just, you know, so fortunate and blessed that I was able to do something like that. Um, will I do more? Uh, hopefully we're talking about it. Um, I tell you one way to make, to make it even more of a chance. I do more is if the books sell well, I mean, they're going to go with that, right? They're going to say, well, we, people like Mark stuff. Let's get more Mark out there. So, uh, hopefully, um, Hopefully they will sell great. Um, I, I think they, they are different. It's eye catching. I was at the, the store the other day uh, looking at um, at the other co uh, the other covers to, that just came out that week, and I was like, "Wow, mine does stand out." I mean, it's it's different. Um, so very happy with that. Um, but it's a uh, yeah, I appreciate everything you said, man. That's just, that's great. It just makes it all worthwhile. Uh, I would not be doing spawn covers if it wasn't for my fans. My fans, <laughs> I don't know if this story is out there or whatever. Uh, I have not talked about it. Uh, but um, my fans tagged Thomas Healy and my stuff because I kept saying I want to do a spawn cover. And because I because I love Spawn, Spawn. If I had a, one comic, to if you could say you only could do one, Mark, and then you're done and you can never do a cover, what would you do? Uh, would you do Spider Man, Hulk, Batman? I've already in my career, I've already done Batman, Spider Man, Superman, X Men, Wolverine, everybody, every single character, and got paid to do them with uh, card sets and statue concepts and all that. And I had a really good uh, run on uh, Batman concept stuff that, uh, you know, I was no that was uh, what I was known for. They would say Mark Spears, the Batman concept artist. So the one character I would always want, uh, Spawn. Spawn was it, man. I, I love monsters. Spawn fits that description for me. Um, and that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I, so I did on, on speculation, right? Can't. Uh, not for prints or anything. I, I just did some spawn stuff because I wanted to and to s show people, hey, I could do spawn. And they tagged Thomas Healy in it. He wrote me one night, and uh, and the the rest is history, man. And I'm telling you, it's just been a blast. I've had so much fun. Hoping you know we do more. Uh, I'm hoping uh, I will get to do an interior book for for spawn. Um, or you know the spawn universe somewhere around in there and That'd be awesome I, I would like to do it just to do it uh it's not a money thing it's not a you know i got to do an interior book actually covers are better than interiors once you get you actually want to become a cover artist after being an interior artist uh it, that's that's the way usually in the business you kind of want to be uh to graduate up to doing covers and then you don't have to do stuff anymore uh, all that interior stuff because it's so hard doing, doing a monthly book and stuff like that. So why, uh, why, why, that why has that changed, Mark? Like why, what in the industry changed that in your opinion? That, um, that no one wants to do interiors? 
Yes, sir. Um, it's it's we well it's it's not I don't know if it if it's new because if you think about it, Todd talks about this a lot. I've I've listened to almost every Todd McFarland interview out there. And if you listen to it, uh, there's one he's talking to the Joe Kubert school and there's other ones. And Todd talks about this, that he it's hard for him to find interior artists because what happened is you can make money um, by not being an interior artist. And Todd talks about that is you can, uh, excuse me, go to cons and do sketch covers and sketches, commissions, and make more money that month than you would have if you would have done, uh, you know, sit at home for 30 days doing 20 pages in a cover. Um, so it's a money issue and it's a work issue. Uh, some of the newer artists don't want to put in a lot of work. I don't know. Um, because interiors are hard. They're, they're hard to do, but, um, I, I don't know, but if you look at in the past, uh, look at like Rob Liefeld, Todd, Jim Lee is, is different because Jim, man, he went on and did Batman later on, Wildcats and so many, but Todd, he did Spider-Man. Well, he did, um, besides the stuff that started his career when he went to, um, Let's see. He went to uh, do Hulk, right? That was his first big run. He did about a year there, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Then he went to Spider-Man and did about a year or two. Then he went did his own Spider-Man for about a year or two. Then he went to to, to Spawn. And after, I, I don't know when he quit doing uh, Spawn. Uh, let's say I had all those at one time. He quit around in the 20s, didn't he, in the teens. So that's about a year or two of Spawn. And he just got kind of, you know, where he goes, I just want to ink it. You know, he was, he got something else to do the interiors. It's a, it's a grueling process because you're, if you do a page a day, you're, um, you're doing a lot of, a lot of work in that page a day uh, of interiors for that. And if oh, yeah. you also ink your stuff, um, like Todd inks his, and I don't know. Um, but it is nowadays very hard to uh, to get interior artists. I know I was talking to someone the other day and uh, at the comic book store. I, I used to own a comic book store back when I was in my twenties. What was it uh, called? It was called the it was called Comic Corner when I bought it, and then I renamed it uh, Rock City Collectibles, which I didn't really. But my the silent owner wanted to rename it that. Mm-hmm. So, care for that name but uh comic corner was kind of cool that's what it was when i got it but uh it one of my biggest customers there he would come in and, and throw down 150 dollars uh a week on books and back then i guess it was a lot now probably not because of the book prices have skyrocketed we're talking about in the late 90s uh early or like in 2000 2001 so he was telling me, he said, I quit buying more. He came in to get some of my spawn stuff and uh, he said, I quit buying comics. And uh, I said, well, what, what happened? He goes, I don't like the interior art. He goes, uh, some of the stories weren't that good and some of the interior art was started getting bad. But he collected like almost everything, right? Everything that would come out, he would get every week. Um, but I think he might get back into it now. Uh, then now that I'm doing some spawn stuff, he's getting all that and, um, but that, that's the thing. I mean, there's some good interior artists out there. I love, like, Gary Frank. Um, we were we had this conversation the other night at the comic book store. We were saying, how many interior pages has J. Scott Campbell done, right? He got so famous, he didn't have to do that anymore. So remember uh, Danger Girl? I love Danger Girl that came out, uh, if y'all remember that. It was so good. And then I don't think he did many interiors after that. Um, he got to where he could get a, he could get more uh, doing a cover and and doing you know so many covers. I remember him doing magazine covers and stuff back then. So that that's just the thing is everybody yeah. wants to be a cover artist, um, which is not a bad thing at all to be a cover artist. But it's it just very, seems like a lot less work than the interior. Yes, it's a lot less, and uh, but. That, and that's a little different. Cover artist is one thing, but like what Todd was talking about um, is the uh, about the no interior because they want to do sketch. See, I don't, I don't really do that. I don't do sketch covers anymore <laughs> and, and all that. 
because uh, the the thing there is, if you go to a show, and and that's I guess that's I don't really go to conventions, but he was saying in Artist Alley there'll be so many people drawing, uh, you know, commissions that day, and they make their money that way, um, and that's true too. You know, everybody wants. Uh, everybody wants a sketch and, and they'll pay for it and and you can you can make your money that way and not ever have to do marvel or dc mm. uh, or or image or, or spawn or anything so um we got a few people up on stage so uh go ahead, yeah, go ahead yeah. Yeah. Mark, mark i just want to apologize to you there she's uh, i remember rock city comics but uh, at, back then in the 90s, I was going to the deep. So oh. I'm sorry. Nah, Ed's a good guy. Was, we was talking about that the other night. I was giving, uh, I was uh, joking with him, I guess, uh, uh, saying that, that that other guy that I was talking about uh, kept me in business because against Ed. But uh, no, man, that's, that's fine. I, <laughs> I actually got out of there. The reason I quit was art. Uh, I, I had to focus on that stuff and I couldn't run a comic book store and do that too. So I let, and then let's see, I left right before they wanted to move. If you remember when Rocket City Collectibles moved, um, they, I want to say moved around in 2002 or so. I got married in 2000. And I think I was there for about another year, and then I gave everything to the my partner and um, him and Robbie. Robbie was actually the guy who was at the deep, the manager of the deep. He was my employee back then, a uh, real, real good guy. And uh, he he went over there to the deep, and they just basically combined the stores. I think at that time, but uh, yeah. Uh, but no, nah, man, Ed, Ed's a good guy. Uh, I loved running this store. I I loved the part where you could see everybody every week, right? I loved when they come in there and you could sit and talk with them and stuff. But uh, uh, that was great. But you know, I had other things I wanted to do, and I just couldn't do it with it, and so I had to give it up. One day, uh, when I have a bunch of comics, maybe I can open up a comic book store, let somebody else run it, and. And then I can go in there and sign and stuff. That'd work. But, but <laughs> do you yeah. do you do any kind of gaming like a D and D type stuff or any of that? Uh, no, I never really got into D and D. Um, the only gaming, I mean, I do Xbox and stuff, but uh, I do uh, Marvel Snap. <laughs> I do that just to unwind. Oh man, I love Marvel. Um, and then uh, that's, I just go ahead. I was going to say there's a lot of monster based uh, role playing games, tabletop role playing games out there, and uh, I, I, I've been in one down there. I don't know if you know where the Lucky Dice Cafe is, but uh, heard that. You, you would make a good DM for your with your knowledge of monsters. You know, a good yeah. DM for a role playing game based on monsters. Uh. I got that, some that was really not why I was up here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was just wanting to say that you, you have a large fan base. And mm-hmm. I noticed that um, they're spread out, though. Uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram is the big one for you, it looks yeah. like. Um have you ever thought of doing your own Discord or someplace to gather them all together? Um, yeah, we, we're we're trying to put together right now a Discord for my community, um, and so people can get together and talk about stuff, and and I can go in there and chat with them and uh, and do stuff like that. And we can offer them stuff that uh, I can't offer other places. Um, but that is the thing. My everything is kind of spread out. I got people that will only respond to me with like through email, like fans, Kickstarter messages, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's basically how it's spread out. And I was saying that the other night when I was signing some comics, I would say, they would say, man, I've been a fan of yours for years. I follow you. And I was like, well, where do you follow me? Do you follow me on Instagram? 
And then, no, I, f- I follow you on Facebook. And I'm like, oh. And then I'll be like, well, I don't really put much artwork on Facebook. Uh, and I was like, you you need to see some of my good stuff. And uh, and I would tell them, you know, go get on Instagram. And But some people, like, prefer certain social networks, right? They, like, prefer this or that. And so, yeah, hopefully the idea there, though, is to get people to go to one place, and that would be, like, my Discord, and then I can – Tell them what's going on, and because I, I really don't even have a website. If there is a website out there, I don't remember. I might have had one, and I don't ever do anything on it anymore. Um, but I don't really, um, I don't really have a website for people to look at everything because I, I do so much so quickly. I try to do it in, uh, um, to where I can just put up on social media. Um, but yeah, the Discord idea is great. But uh, yeah, that's what I think we're. That's the plan is to have a. I believe it's called. Let me look over here. It's called uh, Mark Spears MonsterVerse. I believe. I don't know how to. I can send you all the link. Put post it or something, or somebody can. Um, but that's that's what the plan is there. Have you ever thought of t- uh, attaching on your next series of cards? Maybe attaching some. NFT codes or something like that. Yep. Uh, next card release, um, we're going to have a um, QR code uh, on packs and in boxes. Uh, tell them about the community and also offering digital stuff like that, NFTs. Like you, when you get a box of cards, you're also getting an NFT with it or something. You know, I have to work out the mechanics of the price and all that stuff for the box. but you would uh you would get something like that um because i do want to again there's a lot of people that will uh that want to get in the digital space and then there's also the i get i I sell this stuff where on amazon and walmart i don't know these people when they buy my stuff right so i have thousands of people out there that buy stuff that are fans of mine but have no way you know they're not following me on anything so this will actually give them a chance to go oh i bought this box I got this free thing here. Oh, and now I can go and see what Mark's doing over on Discord. So that was the the idea because Amazon and Walmart, when you sell items, they don't give you the email or anything. I can't contact them at all. Can't you know see how they're doing if they like their product or anything. So the that's the that's the plan is to make it to where um People can communicate with me more. Uh, We'll get um, NFTs, digital content, uh, uh, physical content too, uh, things like that. But basically like a, you know, just a meeting place where everybody can do that stuff. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I'll uh, I'll stop hogging the stage and uh, let other people talk. But, uh, Maybe one day we can meet up at uh, some place or something. And yeah, I'm going to be at the deep for a little while. I'm going to be on the deep on the 15th. Uh, I know you, your mom's birthday is around then or something. I can't remember. Your mom's birthday is around. Uh, yeah. Uh, or something. Um, I'm going to be there on the I, deep on the 15th and the expo the weekend after that. Well, I'll, I'll catch up with you sometimes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, not then, I'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up. schedule a date over there at the date, man. I'll I'll just show up and we'll just we'll sit there and talk. Yeah, yeah, know. man, that'd be fun. Yep. Rick, Iowa, uh, did All you? Right, you I'm All right, she's fun. Uh, we'll see you later. Hey, Roll, I see Bye. you wanted to go too. So either one. I look, I got next. I call next. You call next. Oh, you, boy. <laughs> what up, Mark? What up, man? Not much, man. Look, I'm loving this draw. It's coming together. Looks good. You definitely uh, did not disappoint it'll, it'll tonight. Be, it'll be done in five hours, man. <laughs> 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 look, I believe it. I believe it. But look, look. So when you're talking about different uh, social media networks, what I follow you on is uh, Instagram. And I tell you what, the the stuff that you're posting with this new comic uh, and the in the guy all in black and he's putting the bullet hole through that big dude yeah. and just man, the 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 quality and just 
the I guess it's just like it's almost like painting almost. It's just it's so beautiful yeah. that like you said, like a lot of people, artists, all these artists, you know, they all do covers, covers, but the interior, man, I haven't seen interior art like that in a comic, uh, bro, forever. So to me, I like, dude, I cannot wait to get my hands uh, on this comic and get stuff like that from me because, man, that is is beautiful. And what's and I guess that the character is that your own creation or what, what's going yeah, on every, there? Everything, all the, the thing in the comic is all 100% mine. Everything is all those characters are mine. And uh, the, the it'll be written, directed, <laughs> starring, everything will be me um, in that. So, uh, it's going to be neat. The thing was, I was told about a year or so ago, when someone was looking at my art, uh, they were like, well, yeah, you, you could probably do some covers. You know, they, they thought, hey, uh, movie posters, things like that. They said, not a, not interior art. You, you couldn't do that. And I was like, well, why? And they said, it would be, you'd be too slow. They said, Alex Ross is, uh, you know, see, that's another person who, Alex Ross, oh my goodness, I mean, talk about painting is, you know, number one. And uh, it takes him a while to do interior stuff, right? Uh, he's done Kingdom Come. He did Earth, what was it, Earth X? He did uh, Marvels. Uh, I think he did a few pages of Mask. Uh, I don't know if he did, I think maybe he did a few pages of that Fantastic Four thing he put out. But he doesn't really do a lot of interiors, right? Because it, it takes forever, you know, with references and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, okay, for me to be able to do a comic and to be able to get it done when when people want it done, I would have to get faster. So I got faster. And I think I can do an interior cover. I think the, I mean, the interior pages... Uh, I think my stuff looks good, but I'm kind of what y'all saw on uh, Instagram of those pages. Those are kind of done, but I will go back over that and even make it even better. Uh, you know, look a little bit better because those are just done to show some. I was trying to show everybody, hey, I can do this. Um, but I have time when they when I get the whole book done, I'm going to go back over it, you know, fill in some more little details and stuff like that. But um I, I think, dude, if I just imagine me uh, drawing Spawn or something like that with uh, with those interiors, I, I think I could really capture something there that's really cool. Mark, I think if you did Spawn and you did it in that style, I think you're bringing Spawn to the next level. I think that's something like, you know, you I've been collecting Spawn and looking at the art and stuff like that. And I have my favorite artists that I like throughout the Spawn series. Uh, but I'm telling you, like, if you did something like that on Spawn, that's a game changer. It really is. You're talking about bringing a whole community and people just buying uh, not just for the story, but just like for the art. Like, man, look at this guy here. Uh that would be incredible. And then when you're telling me about this other stuff, like, hey, you're going to go back over your comic and make it look better. I mean, it looks beautiful now. I can't imagine what else you could even do yeah. to it. Yeah. I mean, it looks amazing. It really is. And the character looks badass and just uh, – I, I think you got – so this will be, I guess, the first appearance of all these characters. This is the uh, the first yeah, – this, uh, this will be the first appearance. Of course, there's also characters in there that you're going to kind of know. Uh, Frankenstein monster, Wolfman going to show up, Dracula, things like that. But, dude uh, – it's going to have uh, uh, all kinds of, if you like, uh, G.I. Joe. I got an organization that's kind of like Cobra, you know, in there. I got, uh, I've got, i got characters that are not classic monsters. I got characters that are um, science fiction. I got a lot of science fiction in there. I got, I got everything making the story blend, and I'm trying to make it to where, you know, you would like it uh, if you're if, – it's all – set in the 80s it's hard to tell that i think on those pages that i did release because there's not a lot of references around those what's going on but it is 80s uh those pages were and i think that's kind of cool uh, a lot of people like the 80s and stuff like that um but uh yeah i think it's gonna be pretty good i think that's gonna surprise me people i don't know if right now if it's gonna be self-published or published through image uh, once I have all the artwork done, I'm sending it to Image uh, because that's what they want. They want all the artwork done before they, you know, talk to you about it and see what kind of, you know, their deal and terms are. And then I might do that. Might do Kickstarter. Might do both uh, where there's a version of Kickstarter, you know, different cover or something over there. I'm not, not sure yet. But 
uh, page wise, um, I'm already up to page 50. So I don't know what pay, how much, how many pages the first issue would be, or if it would be like broken up into three or four issues or, or what this is what I'm doing is chapter one. So I'm trying to finish chapter one and then see, well, how big was chapter one and how many issues would that be? Or does it need to be a graphic novel? Um, I like comic books. So even though I like graphic novels, comic books are just a little bit better to me. You know, I just like the, I like the feel of a comic book. But what I would like to do, there's something, I don't know if many people's done it. I'm sure someone's done it, but it would be neat to me to put all like four issues out at the exact same time, you know? So like, you know, people are used to streaming right now. Like, you know, something comes out on Netflix, you can watch it all. Uh, that would be kind of neat to where you can say, oh, I got all of it. Um, I got all of it right now. I can read four or five to six issues, whatever it is, of Mark's Monsters right now. Um, and then, uh, and then I would put out chapter two, uh, and it would be pretty big too, but yeah, I already have the idea for the whole story, kind of where it's going and everything. And, and I'm getting faster with pages to where I think I could get, I could easily do it monthly if I needed to. If that's all I was doing, I could, I could easily do that. Look, Mark, I tell you what, and not even that, I think the quality of your work, it even look, I would even pay more money for something like that because, you know, like you said, you get these comics and you're like, oh, OK, you look at the cover, but you open it up, the interior arts is just, oh, it's trash. And it's just it really is. It, it brings the quality of even the character down just when you can't even enjoy the art and you're trying to read the story and all that kind of stuff. But like when you're looking at something visually that's just beautiful, man, it, it makes it just so much easier and better like hey yeah look i'll pay you ten dollars for this freaking this comic right here because i mean it's so beautiful and the quality is there um so i mean i'm i'm all for it and then like even you said bringing people into the community if you're having like in the back of your comic put you know a qr code or something where it brings you yep. to your discord where hey after i'm done reading yeah after i'm done reading it like hey man what is this okay scan it boom i'm in your discord there you go definitely going to do that i think um the the thing there um you're, you're right. It's weird. Uh, I don't buy a lot of comics anymore, but from what I gathered the other day when I was there looking, I would pick something up and I'd look at it. If cover artists are not interior artists, you know, and I don't want to say nothing to offend anybody. Lord knows I'm not trying to at all. But what I'm saying is when you look at something, you go, man, that's an awesome cover. What is that? And you pick it up and you look inside and then, oh, if you're a little disappointed, it kills it. Yeah, it's it, terrible. It, it, I remember back at the comic book store when I collected, I, I collected comic books for, for years and years. I mean, I was a huge fan and I don't do it lately because I'm too busy drawing. But one day, you know, I'll get back into collecting. But uh, that that really, it just ruined me. I, I tell you, when I was younger, okay, Todd McFarlane did some uh if y'all might remember that Marvel Comics present covers or something, I remember a couple of those. He did cover for Quasar, dude. When Quasar came out, which I collected Quasar at that time, uh, I'm one of the few, I guess. And I saw this cover by Todd McFarlane. I am like jumping up and down, going, "Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get my hands on that!" I'm, I'm running over there to the stand, picking it up, and, and it wasn't Todd inside. And it, it just they just deflated you, right? I mean, it's just it's like I want to see what that looks like. Um and I, I think that's that's something now it's a cover has turned into not giving you a glimpse of what's in the book. It's it's just trying to get you to buy the book. That's which all no is. offense to any comic book companies, because I don't want to offend you. I want you to hire me as much as you want to. But what I'm saying there is it's changed uh, to where it was weird to me when the, I was going to do the, the Spawn covers. I, I realize now covers do not have to have something about what's going on inside the book. I mean, that changed a couple of years ago, I guess. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, you know, like Jericho could be on the cover and not inside it. You know, but that's just something that's happened in in comics. Also, variant covers, right? There's like, uh, man, there's I think some books have like 10 to 15 to 20 variant covers sometimes. And I'm like, 
what's going on? You know, I don't understand that. The, to me, those things is is what kills it for me with comics because – and then two, almost, it almost is where I'm almost where you have to enjoy the moment in a comic run where, hey, they hired this artist. He's doing the interior art. You love it, and it's like, okay – uh, he's only got a 12 comic run. Well, after that, you know, they'll get some new guy. He comes in. He's not as good or his style's different. And it really yeah. is. It's tough to really enjoy it because so Spawn, you know, he, over the years, you know, you had Greg Capullo. Then they went to Simon and then from Simon went to Jason. When when they had yeah. Simon and then they went to Jason Sean, I mean, those were some great years and the, the art was great. I mean, it really was just progressing. Uh, and then from there, it's just like I'm like, oh, man, I'm just – when you have artists like that and you come back down to where to me now, not knocking anything, it's just it's not the same. It's tough to fill those shoes, but I think your style, it hasn't been done, and it's so just like art, like just like painter-esque. It's just – man, it would be insane for someone who's collected Spawn for years. Uh, look, I would love it. I would love it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. I did. I I have those same emotions uh, when uh, on runs like uh, when I was collecting. Like I would be, I would buy. Okay, I would go. You know, get the pull boxes right where the comic store grabs you. The you know says, oh, you want New Mutants or oh, you want X Men, right? And I didn't understand back then that you would change creative teams so quickly or. You know, then there would be a thing where it wasn't a change of creative teams, but the guy wanted a week, a month off or something. So they would have a, a guest issue or something. And I didn't like that either. And I'm like, I don't want to buy this. But they're like, well, you, you've got it in your pull box. you got to buy it. And I'm like, man, what this? Yeah. Um, because it's uh, you wanted that that team that sold you on it. Uh, and I, I, I feel you there. Uh, yeah. The variant covers, though, if I do something, I will have 100 variant <laughs> No, I'm just playing. Um, I would do variant covers for mine because I know there's some people out there that love certain characters. So that's the reason I would do that is like, hey, if you like the Monster Slayer, he's on this cover. If you like the Creature of the Black Lagoon kind of character, he's on this cover, right? Just to kind of, you know, do that. It'd be, it would be a number one issue and, and do all that. But. Yeah, I, look, I love all those ideas, and, and like I said, to me, I just hate to the fact where like you know I've collected so many spawn cards where it's like you're buying it for because you you want to you know have them all. You're like, okay, well, I just have three hundred ninety three hundred one three hundred two, but it, it's it's sad where you're just like, man, I'm buying this, but I'm not enjoying the interior art. I'm just not enjoying what I'm yeah. looking at, and you're just buying it more for the cover and uh, you know. Of, 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 but to keep is, the number up too, man. Yeah. You just think like, oh, dude, if I stop this, I'll end up buying it later on. It might be harder to find or more expensive exactly um, exactly and I, i'm with you there uh i just another thing i want to do uh with my own comic that i don't see a lot of other ones do i want to have like an artist edition where it's printed without words right so you can enjoy, no word balloons so you can enjoy the artwork hopefully you would still be able to follow along or i didn't do my job anyways right love so, I want to do something like that. And also, uh, I would love to do it a little bit bigger for maybe the artist edition where it's a little bit bigger than a comic book size so where you can really enjoy that artwork, right? Because I'm drawing this pretty big. I want you to be able to see it. Right. Um, even a different so, quality paper even. Yeah, yeah. You, you make it Like you said, you know, I think people may be paid a little bit more for that because it would be just to for you to enjoy what I my real my vision was when I when I created it. Uh, so you can actually, you know, see it a little bit better. Um, I can't stand man now comics. Uh, I'm in my 40s. And when I'm looking down at reading some of these comics, man, I'm like, dude, that's kind of tiny when they're reprinted in like trades and stuff. It's it's like. I'm, I'm sitting there going, man, this is going to strain my eyes, you know, because they're they're putting the text so small sometimes. Um, so I don't know. I want to I want to fix that on on mine. I want to make it a little bit a little bit different. Oh, look, yours is totally like I said. It's been a long time where I've seen something uh, like what you have on Instagram, where I'm just like, man, this is a game changer. This is something that I will enjoy 
uh, just visually looking at and just like, okay, here's my money. You, you can take my money for this. This is quality. Someone put the time and you can tell the effort into this where you get some of these comics and you open them up. And you're just like, man, this is garbage. It's, you know, it's, you know, 30 day deadline. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. And, and I, I think out. that's a, a lot of it is they're, they're so rushed, right? So they're having to go, Hey man, I gotta get this thing done. <laughs> And I understand that. Uh, but, dude, I'll tell you right now, I know some artists, even in Huntsville, that is that uh, is good. He's um, He's been drawing since I was. We both started out about the same time. Uh, he did a lot of image comics, you know, the, the smaller image comics in the uh, early 2000s. Uh, he even did something Stanley with the Stanley Hockey League and stuff uh, that they did a comic for that when Stan was still alive. And... No one's knocking on his door. He would he would give his left arm to do an interior book for somewhere, right? Um, it's 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 almost like there's a click of they they, they have a Rolodex, right? This guy does work. I know he'll get it here on time. I'm calling him, you know. And eh, I know. I mean, it's that's just what I think. I, I believe they could actually. Uh, uh, let more people in. I think there's a lot of artists out there who really want those jobs, but they can't get them. I don't know. That's just that's just what I'm thinking. Oh yeah, and well, and two is probably putting in the time and effort to find that person and he's someone who's reliable yeah. can put it. You know, one the quality, but be on time. It's probably a lot to that. I could see it, but uh, I'm definitely excited, Mark, about the stuff you got coming. I yeah, love that. Hey, you, I'm excited. Man. You know, and I'll tell you what, I'm even excited for you with just the Discord and get into the digital space. I think like you're you're going on to a new season of your life where like man, things are about to start ramping yeah, up. I, I, Bigger yeah, community. Yeah. Like I, I can't wait to see you at New York Comic Con. Like, you know, all the cons. Well, like, yeah, 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 I, might to, I might finally have to go to that, man, because I'm getting known out there. And that's what uh, that's what's awesome is, uh, you know, I, I was telling people the other night uh, at the signing, they were because people think, oh, you do spawn covers or you've done the Spirit Halloween movie poster or you've done this and you've got this and, you you know, you're the artist of the year, Rondo winner and all that. I contacted horror magazines after I uh, won my Rondo for Best Horror Artist of the Year in 2020. And because the horror magazine that I used to do back in uh, years ago uh, that he covers for that I got nominated, they had went out of business. They don't do print anymore. They just do online stuff. So I was like, I would like to do some more cover. I've, I've gotten better. I would like to do some magazine covers of horror stuff. I wrote, and I won't name who. But I wrote a couple of magazines, horror magazines. Kind of easy to figure out who I wrote, though. Said, I will do this for free. You will have the Rondo Hatton Artist of the Year horror guy doing your cover for free. No response. That is insane. I, I wrote one person on Twitter that is the editor-in-chief or owner of it or whatever. And I said, when, will you, uh, when can I do a cover for you? And they wrote back, then something to our submissions department. And I'm like, wow. And then I'm like, okay, hey, I'm not too big. I ain't got the big ego. I'll send to your submissions department. Send it in that night. Never heard back from them. I sent it again, again a month later thinking, you know what? Maybe they just didn't get it. They're bit nothing. Right? So I'm telling you, it's uh, it's just a weird thing. I love what's going on now. My name's getting out there more. Uh, hopefully more work, more stuff comes in my way. More people will see my stuff. Um, what's really weird that I'm, uh, that I'm thinking, I was telling uh, somebody today about that. It's almost like people in positions of hiring you don't really like my stuff. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe they just don't see it. But fans... Love my stuff. Uh, the the fans that I have. I mean, they 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 love it. They love everything I do. I have uh, some celebrity fans that like what I do, and they share my stuff with their friends, and it's great. And but it's like almost like they're they don't think people will like that, and they're like that's a different style. I don't think people would like that in comics, or I don't. You know, hey, I sent submissions to Marvel and DC up until. 12 2012 or so and they kept rejecting me the last rejections i got weren't you need to work on this or that right nope i will not look at your stuff because you put batman in the wrong costume that he's in this current costume and i was like hmm okay 
redid a brand new submission. Batman in his, and then got to remember, I've been known to draw Batman at this time for a long time. You right? I started drawing Batman in 2006 for a uh, for DC Comics in their concept stuff and uh, in the trading cards and all that. Drew Batman in his new what I think it was new 52 outfit or whatever. Send it in. We will not look at this. He's in a different costume now because they kept changing his costume. You know. Oh. <laughs> It's always fun. Well, you know, too, Mark, it's just like the one guy you were talking about, the Halloween stuff. Hey, look, I want it this way. It's like, why would you take hire an artist and then try to box them in? You see the quality of work over the years. Like, you know, this guy's phenomenal. Like, why would you put a box and try to cage him in? Let the guy cook. Let him do what he does best. You're not an artist. You're just some guy business. You're just some business guy. Just let the artist do what he does. I'll tell you, that's why, honestly, if if I could work with. Todd's company for the rest of my life, right? Do my own stuff too, but and work with with Spawn and never work with another comic company. I'd still be very, very happy. And the reason is Todd's an artist and he gets it. Todd understands that stuff. Um, what I love about Todd is his rule. Is it cool, right? Uh, I dream. Okay, on on the Gunslinger cover, if you've seen the advertisement of that, you know it's got the cat on it. One of the little minions is holding that cat. I draw that up. My wife looks at it, says, what's the cat for? I said, I thought it looked cool. She said, I think they're going to say something about that and make you have to redo the whole cover then. I went, we'll see if Todd lives by what he says. You know, like, is it cool? He, he, he goes with it. And I said, "That's I think it looks cool. My son comes up, looks at it, my youngest son. He goes, what's the cat for? And I was like, I think it looks cool. I turned that in. Todd, Thomas Healy and Todd McFarlane never once asked me about that cat. They just loved the cover. And that's what I, I that's who I want to work with forever, right? Let me do what I do and then let's let's do something awesome together. And uh I, I loved it. Uh then they never asked me about the knife. The action figure, right? I got one of the minions holding an action figure. They never said, well, what's that for? And honestly, other companies that I work for doing things, they would have said that. They would have said, well, what's that for? Why, why are you doing that? You know, like, why, why are you adding the action figure? Why are you having the cat? You know, why, why has he got this expression? You know, they, they wouldn't understand those things. And you're doing it because it looks neat. You want the freak's hair to flow and to, you know, to look neat. Um and uh, that's why I say I, I love working with Thomas and, uh, and and Todd, um, and hopefully you know more of that stuff will happen. I would like I said love to do interiors, but uh, also w- when I'm freed up to do what I can do and no restrictions or whatever, that's what'll be in my comic book when I do. You can see you know more like wow, this is what happens when no one's telling Mark, hey, you got to do it this way or that way. Look, Mark, I'm going to tell you what, I, I think anybody who's trying to box you in is just retarded. That just, <laughs> it's just retarded. And then I'll tell you what it needs to be slapped. Man, look, I don't want to take up too much more time. I have one last question. And look, I'm getting off. Uh, I saw some of your Houdini artwork. And look, they, even that stuff just blew me away of just like, it looked like some old vintage uh, Houdini, he's in the underwater, all the locks. Like, what even made you even get into doing that stuff? Well, I love Houdini, right? I always loved Houdini. I watch any documentaries about Houdini, uh, know a lot about him. Um, which you know, it's really weird. Uh, Todd did a character Houdini, right? There's a Harry Houdini in Todd's universe, yeah, um, in early issues, yep. And uh, so man, Todd's been. I, I don't know if I'm just uh, coattailing him or what, because I, I, I create my monsters, right? Well, Todd made, didn't he do a, a line of figures where he had his own Frankenstein, his own Dracula, his own Wizards of Oz. So it's weird. I'm not even thinking of that when I do those things, but Todd's already already done those things, and I'm like falling behind doing the same kind of thing. But uh, loved Houdini, um, and I was like, where would this fit if I did this? You know, like, what can I use this for? Because I wanted to do it. I wanted to draw some Houdini stuff just to do it. And I was like, well, if I do a Halloween edition card series 
And his, I think, was it his death or birth or something was on Halloween? I can't remember. It was one one of those. Um, I was like, I could get away with uh, putting that in the card series. Uh, and people might be not get mad at me. And uh, that's what I did. Um, and uh, I just love to do it. I like to do things like that. Uh, and it gave me a chance to do something more realistic, but still, you know, neat looking. Um but uh, yeah, I, I, again, loved Houdini. Um, I wish uh, I I looked into like, man, is there a way I could offer an autograph for the card series with that? And I just couldn't couldn't afford that. And uh, but I would, I'd love to own something of Houdini's one day. That would be really cool. Look, I was looking at stuff. I would love to print print those out as posters and literally get them like nicely framed and put those in my house. That's how cool <laughs> those things are that you did. I was like, man, this is beautiful. It's like just old vintage looking, like almost like posters that he would put up to sell to sell tickets to come yeah, see yeah. him do his magic. Yeah, I, I, bet, I, I base those on the his posters. Uh, the those are the Houdini stickers. So uh, that I did. Uh, so those are based on his posters. And then I also did some, um, what do you call them? Uh, like portraits of Houdini. I did like th two or three of those too. So there's a lot of Houdini stuff in those, uh, in that Halloween edition. Um, it, I would make a character Houdini if I could, but I, I thought of including Houdini in my flashback scenes of the 1800s, but he, he was actually more of a 1920 guy he would have been very young in the late 1800s 18 yeah he would have been i think he was born like in in 1880 something uh 1878 or something like that i can't can't recall but he would have been too young to to have been in that stuff for my stories but yeah i love it love lots of that stuff i also do sports art if anybody wants alabama prints <laughs> dogs real tied. I got a George Bulldogs friend there. Okay. Go, go, All go, right. go, go, go. On that on that note, I need to get off this stage now. I got a question. Go ahead. Did you see the belt he tweeted out at you? The belt? Yes. On yes. on I knew I put it real quick. I on was Twitter? looking at my office. I was getting ready and uh, I said, Oh, I gotta I gotta tweet this to Rick Flair. And uh go look at that, man. Yeah, he tweeted that, some out. It's, it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Let me go see what you got. I retweeted it from the Odd Key uh, Cafe Twitter if anyone wants to see it. <laughs> well, y'all are about retarded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. That's that awesome. That is sweet. <laughs> oh, man. Good deal, man. That is too funny. I <laughs> lost my fantasy belt this year. Uh huh. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, guys, hey, thank y'all for letting me up here. Uh, enjoy, hey, Mark, enjoyed talking with you and stuff. Congratulations on all the, you know, the stuff that's got oh, you got man. going yeah, for you. Thank man. you so much, man. I really appreciate appreciate everything you're doing, man. Yeah, thank you. it really is, man. Uh, uh, it's it's awesome to see that. And, and you know what it is? It's just you you kind of pull you pull for the little man, man. You pull for the guy who's been fighting his whole life to get finally get it. And like, man, you see it coming with all the community and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, hey, you know what, Mark? You you put in the time, the sweat, and the work. And like, hey, man, here's your moment. So uh, congratulations, man. Congrats. I, do agree. I appreciate that, man. And again, a lot of I don't know for other artists it's the same way, but for me, it's a confidence thing. If somebody sits there and y'all give me the confidence to where I go, wow, they really like this. They, I'm getting a lot of feedback that they like it. If you put something out there and no one ever says anything about it and all that, it makes me feel like, wow, I'm just entertaining myself. No one else is getting this. You know, no one else understands it. So that that just, that inspires me to keep going, man, as I, I, I want to see what else y'all might like and, uh, and go on a journey with you guys. And uh, I appreciate every bit of it, man. And, and how'd you get your belt made with the monster stuff on there? We, they, it's, a, uh, it's a custom belt play. Right when I won the award, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm getting a belt. And because uh, I wanted to walk around the house with that strapped on my, like on my yeah. arm. And uh, I, I went to this place and uh, online, I, I'd have to look it up and I'll tell you later, but it's, uh, they, they did it. And man, they, it's even got the plates on the side. Oh, it was nice. Oh yeah. I might have yeah. to bring it to the expo and uh, walk around with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, Mark, hey man, thank you for having me up and uh, I'll let somebody else get up there. All right. See you, Rick. Peace. <laughs> Raul, I know you've been waiting for quite some time, man. 
<laughs> hello, um, Rem. Hello, Mark. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah. I doing uh, words for my <laughs> college, <laughs> and I have a lot of words. I I am very busy for the college. I t try to t have time for the cafe. <laughs> Oh. Appreciate you being here. Um, <laughs> I have uh, a lot of questions, but I <laughs> I have that to say two, uh, three of two questions. Uh, okay. My English is. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. You just tell it. And we'll we'll figure it out. You you say it. We'll figure it out for you. Okay. Um. Uh, I had um. Question uh, is um, I want uh, I I know a uh, you are um, artist for a lot of years and you draw in Batman and Spawn yeah. is so awesome your your work are so amazing for me and I don't have any of your covers because in Colombia no um, no not by Spawn in the comic stores and this is horrible. <laughs> I try to have my, one of my comedy and I have one cover, fun cover in a, one comedy of a spawn and I try to have this cover on, on one of the, your covers because your covers, uh, I love your art in, it's so awesome. Um, my question, <laughs> sorry, but I go for other ways. No, no, no problem, man. Um, my question is, uh, uh, first, uh, what is the program you s s use for this draw? Uh, what is the, yes, this is the question. <laughs> that is the question. Programs that I use and stuff? Okay, this is a Photoshop. This is my number one go-to, right, my program. And I have, like, uh, custom brushes and stuff. I know this is not, this is more traditional stuff i'm going to try to paint a little bit on it uh depending what time it is but uh, that's why it takes me you know uh, it might take me 12 hours to do a painting in a day but i i you know i work a lot i work insane amount of hours but and, and here's my advice because i know you're an artist too someone will be better than me i know that right there's a lot of people better than me at drawing a lot of people better than me at painting a lot of people better than me with colors and all that stuff and I can't help that. But there's one thing you can control is you can't let them outwork you, right? So you tell me you can't do this. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to do it and I'm going to figure out how to get it done and I'm going to do it. Um, so never be outworked. You can be out talented, right? There's people born with more talent than I could ever grasp to be, right? But never let them outwork you. That that's the thing you can't you can't do. Um, so this is a this is Photoshop. They use it. Um, I use um, I use sometimes I use Blender and Das 3D places uh, 3D programs like that because I need to know like where the light source is going to be and and things like that. Um, like on on this, you know, if I if I had a 3D model of just a a human head or just a blank head, I would know where the light is actually going to hit this cape to where I would know exactly what the shadow would be. So that's that's why I use that. Um, Alex Ross uses live models. I don't know enough people to use live models. <laughs> I just and I can't wake somebody up at three o'clock in the morning and, and say, "Hey, hey, son, will you stand up and and put this mask on? Let me take a photo of you, so I know where the light's going to be on you." You know, they won't go for that. So um, uh, that's why three D programs are good. Um, but drawing, uh, you know, pencil and a piece of paper, man, I, that's what got me doing everything I do. I do more now with digital just because it's a little easier. This is a, uh, what screen you're seeing is a Wacom, Wacom Cintiq 32-inch. Uh, I uh, think, I believe Todd does something similar to this. I think that's what he's got. These are expensive, though. I couldn't afford one of these until like two years ago after my Kickstarter. That's what basically I bought after Kickstarter. Uh, but 
paper and a pencil, man. I, I use, I can't show you because it's on my screen, but I use a, uh, I can read it. Um, this is what I've been using for probably 20, 30 years. Pentel P205. It's a 0.5 millimeter pencil. It's just a, it's a mechanical pencil, right? That's what I use. I use a kneaded eraser. That's like a clay eraser. And I like Bristol board to draw on. But what I used to do was do that and then scan it in and stuff. But now I'll just go ahead and go direct to digital because it's quicker and easier. Um, I know living overseas, uh, man, it may, I don't know what time it is there right now. Uh, I appreciate you you showing up, man, because uh, I know it's it's got to be early or late there. Um, but right now, uh, more people are getting hired overseas to do Marvel and DC and Dynamite and all these comic book companies, the image stuff. Uh, so you have a better chance now of getting noticed than ever before because uh, it doesn't matter where you live anymore. They just want, they want somebody who will do the work. Uh, and again, that goes back to never let somebody outwork you and, uh, and it'll pay off. Hey, it's not easy. Uh, I think I told you that before. It's, it's tough. Uh, I'm in my forties and I'm, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm just now getting to a point where, and hopefully things are going to be going really good in the next couple of years. Last year was an amazing year for me. Hopefully this year will be even better. The next year continues and it'll snowball. But um, other things I would suggest for you, I know you got some more questions, but other things too is uh, somebody was asking me the other night is social media. Uh, get that Instagram account, get a Twitter, get a Facebook uh, TikTok, I don't really do. I think I got a count there. I got five videos up. That's it. But get YouTube. Start posting your stuff everywhere. Uh, even back in 2006, when I got picked to do the Marvel uh, statues, it was because uh, Tracy Pearson, who was over that project, saw my stuff on comic comic uh, comicartfans.com. Which, you know, the internet was a lot smaller back in 2006. You know, there wasn't that much stuff out there. And she saw my stuff there and gave me a chance, wanted me to do the, the statues for her. So the, your stuff is spread it everywhere, show it people everywhere. And it doesn't matter if you go, I don't know if I'm good enough yet to show it. Show it. And then keep getting better. You're going to keep getting better every day. And it, it'll, it'll pay off, man. And when it does, it's sweet. It uh, you, you cry a lot because you're like, wow, these people really like my stuff. And I'm so fortunate and blessed that, that they do. But go ahead. I know you got some more questions. Yeah. <laughs> change of most. I appreciate you what you say. Um, I have a second question. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I, I um, and in your Instagram, I follow in your Instagram, and I I don't know how to say that. Uh, <laughs> I no, in Spanish is etiquetar. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I uh, lost with the uh, English. All good. Oh no problem. Just just think about it, and uh, we'll try to figure it out. Go ahead. Just try I, to. I, I sing. Uh, to my, my uh, for uh, yeah, Jabizel or uh, Nino, they they can come up. They have their hands raised. We might hands have many, we might have too many people on stage. Uh, I don't know how that works. Mm, JB or Nino, can either of you accept that invite? Ooh. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know why they, they should be able to come up. Seems like the stage has been having problems tonight. Um, I, I say when, when I, I come to a stage in the bar of, I don't know who said that, sorry, um, in the bar of, up uh, the bar, it's through the bottom for come to the stage. But if you if I go for the chat, I tr can can I can put the bottom for come to the stage. 
Yeah, if you want to type it out in chat and we can, yeah, what, however. Yeah, we'll figure works. it out. We'll stop it out and we'll, we'll answer it. What part is it? You say that he's, that he tagged? Wants to say that he tagged. Oh, he tagged me in something on Instagram. Oh. Uh, is that, sorry, uh, when I, I tagged you in Instagram and you see two of my draws. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go look at it in a little bit. Um, I don't remember, you know, I get I get a lot of tags and stuff. But I'll have to go look at it and see. But if you tag me, uh, I'll look at it and uh, I'll write you back on Instagram and let you know what I think about it. And give you some pointers and stuff. I'll be happy to. Um, I have a second question. Is um. Uh, what is uh, when you had a um, block, uh, block of credit block? What do you do for past this block? And I don't know who say is the credit block. See, when you have a creative block, like if you're struggling to. Oh, um, I don't really ever have a creative block. I do have blocks where. I'll put something like I'll do something one night and I'll go, man, that sucked. <laughs> Where I finish up something, I go, this is this is bad. You have like I have bad nights where my but it's never really about drawing. Drawing is always usually consistent. It's the 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 creative process messes me up where I think, oh, this will be great. And I'll draw it in a certain way or or lay it out in a certain way. And then when I see it executed, I'm like, yeah, that didn't work out great. But I've noticed when I do things like that, sometimes people like it, even though I it wasn't the way I intended. Um, there's characters that I, I like. Uh, let's see, I don't have a picture of it on Instagram. I think I call it. It's a guy called the Lurker or something, and I, it was a mess up drawing. At first, he had eyes, and I was like, "Oh, this is horrible." So I, I it spent a long time trying to fix it. I ended up saying, okay, it's good enough for a card. Uh, I did it that way. I posted on Instagram. It was like the best thing some, that I had in likes for like the last two months when I posted it. People loved it. And I'm like, wow. So even uh, what I always hear like writers say, just write. Even if you got writer's block, you write anyways. I would say draw. Even if you have, uh, you know, little issues where you're going, I don't know what I'm going to draw right now. Just draw something. Uh, I practice stuff, practice anatomy, practice uh, hands. Uh, the two biggest things to me uh, is hands and faces. And if you, um, if you mess up and don't get the body right, they forgive you because hands and face is what everybody focuses on. That's how we do expressions. Right. So uh, just concentrate on that too. Um, but yeah, I'm, and then also, uh, even your mess ups might be something great one day. People might love that. So don't just throw something out because you think, ah, I'm not feeling it tonight. It actually might work. Thank you so much for. Are oh, you welcome? Um, I, I appreciate you, man. Uh, what time is it there? I, in Colombia are the 10 to uh, 28. I think it's one hour before in USA. I, I don't know how function the. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, right now, uh, now it's 9.30 here. Wow. What, hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, ¿Qué, qué pasó? ¿Qué, ¿Qué tú quieres que yo le pregunte? Ah, gracias. Eh, bueno, una última pregunta. Eh, no sé, a ver, eh, ¿cuál es no sé, el personaje que más disfruta dibujar? Oh, who, o who disfruta the, dibujar who's the most, most favorite character that you love to draw the most? Oh, um, if it's like per company, like DC stuff, yeah. I always prefer Wh whoever drawing. you enjoy the most, the like most? the character itself. Oh, mm. 
Man, that's tough. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I would say monsters in general. That's why I like monsters because I can mess up and it still looks okay because it's a monster. That's why the, I enjoy monsters. Lo entendiste, verdad? Sí, gracias. Sí, sí. No, está bien. Cada vez que pregunta. Eh, no, pues ya, yo creo que ya terminé. Bueno, oh, okay, no okay, yeah. Pues, Everyone likes acting. Um, what is it? Who do you prefer? Well, I don't even know. Um, what is it? Everyone acts is uh, uh. Wait, what was it again? Okay, that's what he asked. And what? ¿Y qué fue la otra pregunta que tú le querías preguntar? Eso era solo. Sí, solo era eso. Ya. Sí, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's it. That's all he wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I see that you struggle a little bit. Decided to come up, but I do love your work, man. Appreciate that. Old school Wolfman thing. That's pretty cool, man. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's it's um. Yeah, that's just it's it's just crazy. It's pretty cool. But that's it. Yeah. Oh man, I appreciate that. Thank you for coming up and helping, man. I appreciate that. Definitely. All right. So, Mark, when you're at the uh, at this portion of the drawing, what are you like looking for? What's trying to catch you? Are you just looking at I'm each different trying to spot? Figure out where I messed up. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing like on this uh, where I want to to go with this. I got to put his little um, skull things down here too. Um, but it's it's tougher talking and drawing at the same time. Yeah, I would imagine. The other night, it was uh, when I did it for doing sketch gallery. Of course, it's pencil, so that's a little easier. But uh, we'll see if I can start fixing it up here. Um, but I'm looking at uh, my mind's going toward colors now, light and shadow, um, because I got the bases down here. So basically, I'm in like crayon mode. Like, what mm -hmm. what do I need to do here? Uh, I don't like uh, like right now. I don't like this section right right there i'm going to fix that um and then i've got to uh color spine i got to fix some of the blending in the background and all that stuff so mm -hmm. do we have a time limit here or are we just doing it till i hey dude done? it's your night go for as long as it's all, right. it's all, all right, whatever yeah. i'm i'm good to go for a little bit while longer so sweet um, yeah this is coming out super nice and for everyone out in the audience remember this just raise your hand and come on up. This is open format. So if you want to ask a question or just banter, feel free. Hey, just very quick. In, in Spanish, we have a say, well, we're, we're going to be here until the body holds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I just figure out how to join. I was having some trouble with the accept button to help Raul. And th thanks a lot. Nino, gracias mi hermano por ayudarnos, pero ya ya descubrimos uh, aquí cómo unirnos. Uh, just uh, ha, ha, I'd like to thank you Mark for being here. Uh, we are helping all the Spanish community in in the OQ project and yeah, obviously all the people think that your art is pretty amazing and pretty unique. So just pretty quick to give the stage to, to the other people. Thanks for being in with us and sharing your art and your process. It's very important to all the artists that are in here and to all the people that wants to be an artist and all your experiences that you're sharing with us, like the path that you have to, to take to get to a certain point and, and to achieve something, it needs a lot of, uh, a lot of patience and a lot of consistency and in uh, daily work, as you just mentioned. So thanks a yeah. lot, man, for being here with us. Oh, man, I appreciate that so much. I just, uh, that's just, that means the world to me. Um, uh, that if I can help someone else uh, just a little bit along the way, that's that's just priceless. Um, and uh that just means a lot. Um, hopefully I can share more stuff of how I do things and my struggles and my successes to where uh, that helps someone else with, with what they do. And, um, and 
like I, I'll, I'll share this story. Maybe this, because they never know what actually might touch uh, someone and, uh, and help them uh, with, with art or whatever career and stuff you got. But um, like, I, I was at a point where uh, it was, you know, art wasn't paying off as great. You know, I'm struggling. I've already done work for DC and Marvel uh, doing the concept art and stuff like that. And like I said, I'd owned a comic book store, right? So I had some of the best comics, right? You know, when I quit doing the comic book store, I still had all these comics. I had probably, I don't know, 20 issues of Spawn 1, right? I probably had of Liefeld's run of New Mutants. I had like doubles of all that. So two Deadpool first appearances, right? At that time in 2000, 2006, uh, or let's say 2009, around that period, they weren't worth anything really, right? Maybe five bucks, you know, maybe double. They weren't really worth that much. Uh, not until the Deadpool movie comes out, you know, and Spawn now is worth a lot more than it was. So I, I had long boxes, if y'all know what comics, the long boxes are of comics. Yeah. Cause when I left uh, the store, when I, when I gave my part away, I kept all the stuff that was mine, my, my personal comics, um, so I had, uh, my comics in there and I also had the comics from childhood. The very first comic I ever got was a Batman issue that my mom got me when I was six. I mean, uh, sick. Uh, I was probably about, you know, maybe seven or eight years old and it was a Batman story and everything. And I had my, uh, name put in it, right? I wrote my name in it. I wrote my name in the Superman issue she got me. Uh, so those were in there and those were actually, in my mind, more valuable than anything else, right? I had them bag and boarded because that was the things that my mom got me and got me liking comics. Um, well, I had uh, some some issues and with uh, my house and everything at that time, and I was moving out. Uh, I basically got foreclosed on uh, back in 2009. It actually, nowadays, they they messed up and actually gave me a settlement for that. They shouldn't have done that. They didn't give me time to, like, fix anything. They just came one day and put a thing on my door, right? I owned the house, but they, you know, I was I had a mortgage. But they put a note on my house saying, you know, nope, we're taking it. It was uh, Wells Fargo, which they, if you read about that, they got in trouble for doing this. Uh, it was kind of like a, a scam that they were doing. Where they wouldn't, like, if you got behind on a payment, I was behind, like, two payments, but I was trying to pay those. They just went ahead and took the house. So that wasn't that big a deal. I lost the house, but I was I already got a new place to, to rent and everything. But at that time, my stuff was still in the house, my, my house that I had owned. And Wells Fargo told me, it's okay. You can keep your stuff there, and we'll give you time to move it out to your renter renter home, right? And uh, so I'm thinking, okay, let's set back, right? But everything's okay. Uh, I lost that, but it's a you know everything's fine because I wasn't really that bad off financially. I just had gotten behind on two payments and all that. So I was like, okay, everything's gonna be fine. I moved uh, not too far away. I wouldn't even. Uh, 200 feet from where the house was, I had rented another house that was actually better than the house that I just lost. So I was like, eh, everything's going to be okay. My comics was at the house, right? So everything, uh, all my comics, my drawings, all my submissions, uh, all my original art, everything is in that house, along with the other valuables and stuff. So one night I go, oh, I need something. So I was going to go over the house to get it. Uh, and I drove back over there and, and we took my, my kids. We go in and we see that someone has been in the house. Someone has broke in the back door, right? Uh, oh, the door man. is broke open. All my stuff is gone, right? The house is trashed. So I'm like, what is going on? You know, what has happened? It actually turns out it wasn't just some random person. It was people that Wells Fargo hired to come in there and clean out houses, if you ever knew knew that. Like, they will come in and seize a house. You know, it's been foreclosed on, and, like, maybe the person left their stuff there, like their couch or whatever, and they'll come in there and clean it up, right? Well, we find that they had taken everything, 
uh, that was any valuable. They left a bunch of other stuff, but anything of value, like I had a guitar that was gone, all my comic stuff. They left cereal. They even had a thing where they opened up some unopened cereal boxes and ate some. <laughs> really? The police. The police find the guys who did it, right? Because they're a company. They the police pull them back around and make them come back uh, to the house. And we're sitting there, and they're like, "Oh no, but we didn't take that. We we did break in, but we were we broke in because the house is actually owned by Wells Fargo. It's not your house anymore. And Wells Fargo gave us permission to break in." I said, "But they've also told me that's my stuff. I could leave it there." And they said, "We don't know anything about no comic books or anything." But they had they had my the police would not go through the stuff that's in their trailer because they the police go, oh, wait, so the house is not in your possession anymore. And I was like, well, no, uh, it's Wells Fargo. But they told me I could leave my stuff there. And the police go, well, eh, sounds like it's your fault then. And I'm like, wow. So that's the story of why I don't have comic books anymore. I got a few. I bought my kids later on, a couple years later, bought a couple copies that I used to have, like the ones that my mom bought me. They bought copies of those and gave them to me at Christmas. But it's the reason I'm telling you this story is look at that setback, man. I mean, I lost everything. Uh, I lost all my comics and everything. And then if that wasn't it, I, and I won't get into that now, but things got a lot worse a couple months later. I was, I was by myself. I had, I was living in my car and now I got a spawn cover. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I, and I, I tell this just because there are things that are going to set you back, but don't let it stop you. Right. Keep going forward. Keep moving forward. I tell you, I tell you what, though, about, let's see, that would happen in November uh, of 12, I think it was, around 13. I, all I had to my name, and, and this is what I told, the, I told him earlier, Raul, earlier, all I had with me in my car was a pencil, a tablet, and a way, uh, I had my laptop, uh, and, and that, that was it. And I, I had a cell phone that I just bought. That was it. That's all the possessions I owned in this world. And I was able to, but I knew I was okay because I had that pencil. And I knew I was good enough, at least at that time, where I could draw and sell those drawings and get back. And I got back. So I went from doing pretty good to, to being at the bottom of the where I was in my life, like the lowest I could be. And then I got it all back. And uh, it's, it was confidence, though. It was like, I can, get it, I can get it back. I made mistakes. I knew I made mistakes. The how, uh, you know, with, with money and stuff. And I was like, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. And, uh, I, you know, pay your bills on time. I've, I've never, never been late with another payment in my whole entire life. Uh, taught, me, taught me about money. Um, but I'm telling you, uh, you can, you can be at the lowest. You can say, well, Mark, I don't have this. I don't have that. It doesn't matter. Like if you, if you want to be a great basketball player, it doesn't matter what kind of shoes you got. You don't have to have Jordans. It's how, you know, are you out there every day shooting, you know, you know making those baskets? That's, that's what it matters. And, uh, so I'm telling you that, you know, I lost, I lost all the, the I really hate that I lost that artwork that I had. Uh, I don't have those rejection letters anymore from Marvel and DC. I had hundreds of those. Um, but I think my my championship ring is gone. I'm not sure. I had that from uh, high school. Uh, there was a lot of things I lost that they stole. But, you know, it's it also made me realize what possessions are, and they're really meaningless because um, you can lose things at any time. So... You know, and what you value most and things. But um, I tell you, uh, you, you can do it. You can come back and you can actually uh, succeed with, with your setbacks. You know, you can, you can make something amazing. Thanks a lot for what you just shared, man. We, we can say right now here with all the community watching you creating this amazing art piece, we can say that those few things that you had in your car were the only things that maybe you need to get back up and keep your, yeah, like your journey again. And look where you're at right now, sharing 
just a, a beautiful experience with all this amazing community that we had. Thanks a lot for what you just shared, man. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. I love your art. Honestly, it's a very unique st style for me. And it's pretty amazing. And yeah, if, if anyone uh, likes to, to hear the uh, inspirational story, well, we, we just had one with Mark here. Thanks a lot, man. I'm going to, to get down off the stage. Uh, Raúl, si nos puedes ayudar, eh, le das clic a, a tu usuario y ahí te va a aparecer la opción de bajar del escenario para que se pueda subir más gente. Eh, Nino, igual, te, bueno, tú sí entiendes inglés o español, mi hermano. Si, si te ibas a hacer algunas preguntas, <risa> yeah. sí, sí, y si no, este, ya al rato que acabes, que nos ayude nada más a bajarnos del escenario todos. Muchas gracias. Si alguien requiere yeah. ayuda para traducciones, con todo gusto, eh, aquí estamos. Ya le entendimos cómo subirnos al escenario. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. We we're still watching you, Mark. All right, thank you so much, man. I really, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, now this yeah. is working. You know, yeah, that was pretty cool. That was pretty crazy. I think we all have to dirty our hands sometimes. Sometimes we got to go through that struggle, right? Yeah, I think that's for, I mean, that goes for everyone. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. That's part of life, though, right? Yep. Sometimes you need to get them hands dirty and need to fall in order for you to pick yourself back up and just, yeah. Well, it makes you appreciate the good times. The struggle makes you appreciate the good stuff, man. Yeah, that's for sure, man. I had like three floods and I lost a lot of my comics and I got them all back. Yeah, I had somebody run into my apartment. They robbed me. I had three like floods. Mm. <laughs> I've been through it all, man. And I lost a lot of my books. And I don't know, I just got them back over the years, but. I hear you, man. That shit is not easy. <laughs> no, it, it's well, not. It's, it's tough, but you... It, 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 it makes you into a better person, reason, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And it makes you it, grind harder. Exactly, you know? man. I'm, again, I'm not going to be outworked. You can you can outdo a lot of stuff, man. I'm not going... You ain't going to out-hustle me. Um, that's right. I'm going to try as hard as I can. That's all right. All right, man. Well, it was good talking to you. Let me get down and give somebody else a chance. Let me see how I'm going to do this, though, because I don't know which button to press, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, man. Thanks for each. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming up, Nino. Finger fit. Does your mic work? Oh, I, I know you've had mic problems and issues in the past. Make sure you have, you go to settings and you go to voice and video. Make sure you have voice activity and not push to talk on. Make sure your input device is the correct one. Dang. Marco Polo, I see you got your hand up. Go feel free to come on up. Man, this was really coming together, Mark. I like the purple red combo. Two different yeah. color eye sockets. Yeah. Well, I'll get those, I'll get those uh fixed up a little bit better. I'll give them green. Minute. Spawn got green eyes. So. Yeah. You now? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll wait. I'll let. Or are you? Uh, no, are you? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, hey, Mark. Um, thanks for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, I'm uh, ashamed to say I'm just discovering you now, uh, and uh, I'm really, um, really loving uh, what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, and um, you know everything you said about you know, working hard and, and, and all that stuff. It's true. Um, you know, I've been a, a photographer and videographer for the last uh, 22 years of my life. And, um, you know, it's not about the, the images and everything that makes you the photographer and videographer. It's, it's how you, you move through the, uh, the adversity of the shoot, um, uh, which makes you um, really good. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I really, really spoke to me what you said about, you know, you know, not being, not trying to be the best, but trying to work outwork everybody. And that's, a, that's something I've always tried to do. Um, so I work for myself and, um, yeah, I'm loving it. That's so, the best person you can ever work for, right? Exactly. Exactly. I, I have to ask myself uh, when I want a day off. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, while I was scrolling your work, I, I noticed the Alabama stuff. Well, kind of. Yeah. And I, I've, you know, I, I, I say I've, I haven't seen your work before, but I probably have in the lobby of the Hoover, Alabama hotel jam packed with, you know, 800 Alabama fans holding yeah. up artwork, trying to get Saban to sign it. So, um, so I probably have seen your work there. Are, but, are um, you from Alabama? 
No, I, I, um, I'm from Florida. I live in the uh, the Keys. Okay. I live in I'm Alberta. Far, man. I'm up at near uh, Huntsville. Um, so I'm at the top of top okay. of Alabama. Yeah, I went to school in Gainesville. I went to Florida. Oh, so, okay. Uh, go, go Gators. <laughs> okay, yeah, I like the Gators. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I've been to Alabama and I've, uh, I've been in Sabin's Graces and, uh, he loves his oatmeal cream pie cookies. Oh yeah, don't uh, he though? I mean, that's that's yeah. legendary now. Yeah. Someone wrote um, recruiting information. They put it on a box of little Debbie oatmeal pies, and uh, tried to hand it to him in the lobby. And the security <laughs> grabbed it and threw it on the chair. And I looked at it and it had this guy's height, weight, name, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. But um, but yeah, I'm excited. Um, when is the comic supposed to come out? Uh, the comic that I'm doing, I uh, don't know yet because the artwork's not finished. Now, the Spawn stuff is all March and some of April. Uh, but my comic that I'm doing, it looks like uh, it'll be this year. Uh, like I said, I'm almost done with the artwork. I think in two weeks I will have all the artwork done. And then it will be um, going either. I'll, I'll probably let Image look at it and see if I want to do that because then that gets it in more people's a view, you know, because it gets distributed through Diamond. Or uh, I'll do Kickstarter, and because the Kickstarter is very successful for comic books, so I'll do, either do that or, or maybe a little bit of combination of both. But um, I'm hoping, I don't know in what kind of form, but I'm hoping about 70 to 80 pages will be in, of my art, of my story will be in everybody's hands before the, the fourth quarter of this year. So the in you know the round uh, fall looks amazing. Um, the stuff on Instagram and and whatnot. Um, well, I'm excited. I appreciate it, man. I'm hoping people will like the story and the art, and uh, we'll you know we'll like it for the art, and then we'll stick around because of the story. Um, of course, I, I don't want to fill it with too many words. I just want to make it to where um, you know people enjoy it uh do it the reason i like comics you know i would like it when, number one for the art but i love the story i love like killing joke when you pick that up and you're going wow mm. this is great you know uh I, there's no telling how many times i've reread that comic uh and i want it to be like that i want you to go i want i can't even put this down i want to reread it right and it doesn't have to be too wordy it just needs to be a good story and to tell a good story with the, the artwork. And so that's, that's what I'm trying. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'll be putting out some more of the uh, pages soon to let everybody see some more of my progress on it. But uh, I don't I know. Had a, yeah. Go I, ahead. Had a, I had a newspaper colleague and I'll leave you with this. He, uh, he would um, in the newspaper business, we would call, um, he would say the words, words are just picture grout. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big yep. art, big art, little words. Surround the page with big art. And or fill the page with big art and surround it with a little bit of words. Little words, yeah. Always looks good. Well, what is it? A picture picture is tells a thousand what is it? Yeah, picture. A picture tells a thousand words. There you go. Yeah, that's it. So that's that's true. Um the thing is, uh that's why even with portraits and stuff of course the spawn is a very bad example <laughs> but uh even with the monster portraits i do i try to tell a story a lot of times you know like the their expression or something you know or with their hands or what mood they're in or so i, I love telling stories and that's that's why i wanted to do some type of comic drawing pretty pretty pictures is great but i always thought of myself not as an artist but as an illustrator and mm -hmm. Uh, that's always what I would tell people is no, nah, I'm, I'm an illustrator. I like to illustrate things, not really just create art. Of course, I might be wrong now. Maybe I'm an artist. Who knows? But uh, um, I do. I'm, I'm excited to tell a story. Yeah. You know, change with time. But um, I I, uh, I definitely want to uh, tell some stories and, and see what people think of them. Yeah, I've always been a, a storyteller with my photography. It's just photojournalism always. I just love doing it. So. Yeah, Dude, it's, uh, photography man is great. I think I might have tried to go that route uh, or route, whatever you want to say it, uh, if uh, if it wasn't for uh, drawing, because I, I do love. I, I never really 
did much photography. My son does. He he's he's a natural at it, and uh, uh, I love it. I love the photography. Also, I study a lot of photography with uh, cinema fo- cinema photography, right? Because that helps me understand how they're telling the story. So I watch uh, YouTube videos. I read books. Uh, so I know why the cinematographer chose the lighting in this situa- situation. Why did they chose to put that person on the right side instead of the left side and, and things like that. But um, yeah, yeah, I had a guy tell me when I first started in the photography, he goes, he, he goes, you need to learn how to see light. And I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Mm-hmm. And then... And then I came across other people, you know, part of that hustle too was, uh, you know, I got to go to, I got to work for the New York Daily News for a week. Oh, man. And I photographed the remnants of 9-11 and, oh. um, you know, uh, I got to go, uh, St. John the Divine, the cathedral caught fire and I got to go to the uh, gift shop, the gift shop caught fire and I got to see the Last Supper tapestry was all burned and I got to go into the antiquities room and photograph it and it was just really cool but that was part of me just just asking. Never be afraid to ask. Yeah, so, hey, that's what uh, Todd says all the time. I watch those videos and he says his employees, if they were smart, every day would ask him for a raise because yeah. <laughs> the only thing that he could possibly say that's negative would be no. Right. He's not going to fire him for asking for a raise. So that's that's the thing I've learned, too, is like it doesn't hurt to just just ask. You know, they might say, no, you can't do that or no, you can't do this. But it doesn't hurt to to try and ask and see. It might work out. Thank you again. And uh, appreciate oh, you thank being you, here. Man. I, I really and appreciate it. I, I, I appreciate you, you coming along on the journey, man. And. And hopefully uh, something amazing will, will be happening in the next couple of months and then the next years. And it's cool to me to watch you because I actually know what you're doing with layers. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. I'll get off of here. Take care. All right. Appreciate you coming up, Finger Fat. Thank you. I'm glad I got the mic fixed. Yeah. What I was the problem? Into, I had to go into settings. I had push the talk thing. Uh, yeah. No worries. Classic. Yeah. All right. Yep. It's Rookie. Right. It's all good. Yeah, it's a, it's a default setting, I think. It's kind of annoying. Story of my life later. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Well, Rick, you see, come back to stage, man. Oh, uh, Rick, you're here, you man. <laughs> Look, you can't throw me out. Look, I'm still here, baby. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Mark. Hey, I know that as far as as far as you're, you're super talented with the the art, but what about when it comes to like telling a story and getting your story together for your new comic and things like that? I mean, how hard is it is it to tell a great story? Even getting that together. Um. Well, okay. Here's what it is. Okay. So the uh, this is the okay. The reason I'm drawing is because when I was younger. I would get these things that y'all might remember called action figures. <laughs> so I would get like G.I. Joe, right? Star Wars, uh, Master of the Universe, Transformers, right? And I'm playing the heck out of those, right? That's all I would think about in school is three o'clock, I'm home, and what am I going to play that day? Like what scenarios, uh, what world are we going to be at that day, right? Uh, but then there come came a point in my life where I finally got I got a little bit older, right? And and it's it was harder for me to get in that floor and, and play with the, the 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 action figures as much. And I'm like, okay. And and also that's another thing. I never played Star Wars, GI Joe, Transformers, Master of the Universe, Thundercats. I, I had all those figures, right? But I always turned them into something else when I would play with them. I, I had my own stories, my own super team, right? So I already was making characters up when I was six, seven years old, right? Backstories, everything. Making my own movies, uh, basically. Um, and then, so when I started, the reason I actually started drawing uh, or drawing characters like that was because I kind of got too old to really play with action figures. I was probably around 13, 14. I started doing drawing instead of actually sitting on the floor acting out everything. And then it opened up so many more possibilities, right? Because not only in my mind was 
Dude, I mean, this is how bad it was. I remember I had, okay, uh, I don't know why, you know, but I had a, um, what is it, Snow Trooper, right? It's the one with the, the white face all the way down. For some reason, I also had this little cowboy hat that came on something that my mom got me with some kind of cowboy and Indian set or something. But it fit that stormtrooper for some reason. It was the only one. So I pretended, this is how my, my imagination goes, that uh, st- um, snow trooper, not storm, snow trooper with the cowboy hat on was Clark Kent, right? Because at that time, I didn't have superpowers, action figures at that time. And when he took when he took the hat off, he's Superman. That's how my imagination was, right? So uh, then I would create my own. I, I got tired of those, so I would make my own. Uh, like I said, my own super teams and my own super villains. And why did the super villains not like the superheroes? And what uh, you know was one of them used to be a superhero, and he turned bad. And I was doing all this at that age, you know. So. The stories, and I was always pretty good in in school with writing with with uh, writing stories and uh, and stuff like that. I was a, a decent writer. Um, so will it be uh, that? That's what I think will surprise people when they see the comic because they they already gonna know the oh I'm, I'm gonna see some pretty pictures, but I believe they will be very surprised with the writing. Going whoa, he can write. You know, he can write some stuff. I've also wrote uh, scripts before. Uh, like, I was going to film a movie uh, here. I was just going to get, like, so much money together and film a movie and stuff like that. I already wrote the script out. It was pretty good. A lot of people read it. It was like, that's great. But then, uh, you know, it was like, man, it's so expensive to film a movie, but you can do it now. You can make a movie on your cell phone, right? But then uh, the art st- stuff started taking off, and I was like, okay, I can actually tell those stories by just drawing them out now. The, the, the reason I didn't like making movies and trying to get everything, I would have all the props, right? I would figure out how I was going to do stuff, right? I would figure out all the death, the gore, and everything. I would buy all the blood, and I was going, okay, I would thumbnail it out. It's going to be this shot, then it'll be this shot, because I studied a lot of movies, cinematography, uh, making of special effects, love special effects, you know, practical effects. The problem with me trying to make any kind of movie was actors. I couldn't get any. Um, you know, where I live, there just wasn't any. I would have friends go, I'll be in it, right? And then, okay, we're shooting next Friday, and no one shows up. And I was like, okay, I can't do this. Uh, so then I thought about, I can make a one-person movie. But I was like, it's just not going to be that great. You know, I need a, a big ensemble to do all that. And also with act, I don't know if I could be a director. Maybe I, I could do all the cinematography and all that stuff. But the patience, uh, I, I would rather draw somebody exactly the way I wanted them to be on the page with the exact emotion than having to film that and make, you know, 50 takes and see if they would actually do that. Um, so, oops, there we go. Oh, my screensaver just popped up. Can y'all see still? There we go. All right. So uh, that's telling me I need to be drawing some more. But um, so I do think I'll be able to tell a story. I do think uh, how I do that, though, I, I also do it a little bit backwards to where I go, okay, what do I want to see in this? And then I try to figure out, uh, a story to go along with that because I know comics is a little bit different. It's all about visuals. But um, also when I did have my uh, stuff at Nacelle, when they had got the rights to do my characters, they wanted me to come up with uh, story Bibles, which uh, for series. So basically they wanted me to write a pitch that then another writer would come in there and go, okay. And then he would change it up and then he would fix it up. Right. So I had four TV shows that I pitched with the plots, the outlines, the character descriptions, their the character uh, biographies, the the traits, all that. The so I already did all that kind of stuff too. I had already I spent me spent months doing that, but I already had all that worked out. So um, I think uh, I think it will work out. I think I will be able to do it pretty good now i could be totally wrong and people will be watching this after the book comes out and say man he messed up but uh it, it'll be entertaining if nothing else you might say wow he he does those big splash panels too much you know maybe but that, that's an artistic choice 
No, mm-hmm. look, I'm gonna tell you what I think it comes through through your art because it makes sense, like almost like a movie. Like when you look through the panels of even your new comic, like you can almost see like how your brain is working and kind of telling the story. So you could see like, hey, you're like having the complete to me to what what a complete artist is is like, hey, one having being able to draw, right? You're gonna be able to draw on something beautiful, but also being a, if you can tell the story as well and have something uh, where you you know you're putting this in a way that people are just like in love with the story and the art. I mean, that is the you know it's it's incredible. That that's where you're at. So it's uh it's like I mean some of my favorite stuff that Todd did was some of the stories in Spawn where he wasn't even doing the drawings. He was actually doing all the um the work as far as just like doing the script work and writing and telling the stories and stuff like that that was some of the my favorite times of the story when ty was actually doing the story um with jim dowling and all that kind of stuff so uh i'm excited yeah i'm I'm hoping i mean i'm hoping it's good again uh it might be that might be what people complain about the most but i think a lot of they'll give you leeway on some of that they'll go well he tried. It's it's a decent story, but the artwork, oh, I'll keep buying it for the artwork or something. I don't know. Um, but I, I think it'll I think it'll be good. Now is it have you been working on the story for some time? I mean, how long have you been really thinking about the uh, the plot and all that? Um I had also I had thought about it before I started the first card series, like certain things uh that I wanted in the comic, like certain story lines, you know. Um and when I was doing the cards, uh, the first series of cards, uh, on the back, there's, you know, there's write-ups for a lot of these characters and stuff. And I already had to work out a lot of the story for that. So, you know, why does this character tie into this character? Uh, what's their backstory? So I had already worked all that stuff out. Um, there is, in the comic, there's only a few things that I probably changed. Most of it was exactly kind of what I wanted to do to start with. Um, there is some more, uh, but I, I've realized my only limitation is I can't tell everything at the beginning. I can't give you everything, but I mean, there's a reason for that. I mean, I'm very excited. I want to give you every, I want to give you the whole story, but I'm realizing it's going to take more than one chapter to do that. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's going to take more. So, um, I will do more. The, the only drawback that I see, and I don't know, maybe, you know, comic book people will not like that, or maybe they'll love it, or who knows, is, like, I will, sometimes I will do three panels or four panels a page. I know those people don't like that. And I do a lot of the cinematic panels. A lot of people say, oh, your stuff's cinematic. Because I do those long 16 by 9 kind of panels. But I like that kind of stuff. I like because I know what you're going to see in that long panel. So when I do those a lot, and then all of a sudden I, you turn the page and it's a splash page, it's like, whoo, it's big. It's it's an impactful pan, page now, right? Uh, so I try to do that. Um, it, maybe I'm taking too long to tell a, a smaller story, you know, by doing it over so many more pages. But... I, I like that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, you, if you can read a comic with no words and you can flip through it pretty quickly, right? Because your eyes catching it going, yep, I see exactly what's happening. Flip the page. Exactly what's happening. Flip the page. I don't think you're going to be upset if it's a lot of pages. If it was stocked with words all over every page, you're going, oh, man, this is a book. You know, I got to read that much to turn the page. But that's not what it's going to be. Um, less is more to me. I don't, I don't want to have too much writing. I do have uh, some, but, uh, but yeah, I have been working on, on this. I mean, some of the dialogue that will be in the book is some of the dialogue I wrote back in probably 2006 for like a, uh, like a script I was going to do at that time. So I'll I'll tell you this, the stuff that I love is the, is the stories that are like, I mean, look at Netflix when they they have stranger things or any of this stuff. I mean, it's what seasons where you're telling, it's not something where in two hours you got to have the whole movie. It's all done. No, Mm -hmm. man, it's taking its time. You're building up the characters. That is the stuff. I mean, look at Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or whatever. No, it's not one movie. It's four or five movies. Right. So to me, those are the ones that are end up being the greatest stories ever because man, they have more time to tell the story and work with it. Well, I described it the other day as 
Game of Thrones with monsters. And what I mean by that is there are factions out there, right? And basically the gist of it is Dracula and his people are playing a game of chess with these other people that are bad guys, right? And then you got the good guys who's trying to stop them both. Um, so it's like a game between these three, and maybe there's more, but there's these three groups, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's, uh, like I said, I, I, I kind of look at it as maybe um, a Game of Thrones, not in the sense of, you know, what time it's set in or anything or, or storytelling, but more of uh, the Game of Thrones was about everybody was vying for that throne, right? Everybody wanted the throne, the Iron Throne. This is similar to that. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. The, here's the thing. At the end of the day, if just a few people like it, but I told the story I wanted to tell, I'm happy, right? Uh, if y'all like it, that's great. But I, I was going to sit there and go, like the other day I was talking to some friends about, well, I don't know if I should put this in there because what if they don't like it, right? What if fans don't, they they think, no, I hate stories that have this this type of thing in there. And they convinced me, hey, do it. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? Because I would regret it later on saying, I wish I would have put that in the story. So I'm, I'm doing it. Hell yeah, Mark. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah, well, Mark, hey, man, I, look, I, to me, that's the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm for is somebody, hey, you know, going against the curve, standing up, saying, look, this is what I want. This is what I'm doing. And like at the end of the day, hey, you're you're falling on your shield and your knife. If you're going to die, at least you die on your own heel. How you wanted to go out, baby. Heck yeah, man. That's it. That's that's exactly what I'm doing there. That's it. But, and, and look, you know what? To me, those are the people that are rewarded. Those are the ones that really, you know, stand above because, hey, they, they freaking went for it. They did it. Yeah, I think, you you know, you're just uh, – if you, if you don't do it, you'll always regret it and, you know, just try it. And this is the best time. This is the time that I should try because – I got a little bit more eyes on me. I got uh, I got some more fans that that want to see the stuff, and uh, I might as well try try to go for it. And and I haven't been wrong yet on what what I want thought people would want. So so I think it'll work. I love it. Well, okay. Well, look, man. I I'll get off stage again. And hey, thank you for letting me uh, come up here again. All right, man. Well, come back next hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. What's going on? Maybe. Or fit. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, there. Oh. Sorry, it was you're cutting out for me. I don't know what's going on. Uh, hey, Mark. It's good to meet you. Uh, hello, Scully. <laughs> Scully, I got, I, I, got like, I, I got one okay, question go for you. Okay, go ahead. Scully. Um, you have two kids, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> do um, uh, did any of them inherit your artistic uh, talent? Uh, neither one can <laughs> draw worth crap. And uh, no, I just one of them. Uh, for everybody out there in the audience, uh, Scully is my youngest son. Uh, that's Chase Spears. And uh, so uh, y'all can say hi to Chase. He's uh. <laughs> And Chase actually is a great artist in his own right. Uh, he's going to take after his old man, and he will inherit Mark Spears' monsters one day when I'm gone and turn into Chase Spears' monsters. Chase okay. Spears' monsters. Oh, wow. yeah. The ring to it isn't as good, though. Yeah, just keep it as Mark Spears' monsters. <laughs> <laughs> I already got the hats, so go ahead and, and make it Mark <laughs> You, oh, you have a question, Chase? I do have an actual question. Okay, what's your actual question? Um, if you could be any monster or horror character ever created and just like, you know, like which one would you be? Like if you mm -hmm. had the ability to be them, mm -hmm. and like inherit their powers, look like them. That's a good question. Well, it, something I always liked when I was a little kid. I always loved the um, 
when this that's not really my answer, but it goes with it is uh, I love the Incredible Hulk TV show with Lou Ferrigno, right? Because I don't know, as a little kid, I felt that more empowered by that. Like some bullies picking on me, wouldn't it be something if all of a sudden my eyes went white? And I just ripped these big old muscles out and, and just showed them what, what I, you know, what for. So with that being said, I wouldn't mind being the wolf man, but I really, I wouldn't want to go around killing people. I would be, I want to, I would want to be a nice wolf man. Right. So uh, right. I would want to be a wolf man that, you know, drac. I, I just, I don't think blood would taste good. I don't want to be a vampire and, and Frankenstein, I don't think he's happy. And uh, mummy, and eh, he looks really rough. Uh, you know, you know what? I would want to. No, I, I take it back. I'd want to be Jekyll, Doctor. I mean, Mister Hyde. He looks like he's having a fun time every time I draw him. He looks like he's just giggling. So I think I'd want to be Mister Hyde. That's a good answer. I like that. That's that's the answer. I do like characters like Mister Hyde and Wolfman that change. That you know. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, a thing with a lot of people. They want to, you know, they want to change and be somebody else sometimes. Uh, so that would be cool. Drink a fluid, and I'm I'm somebody different. <laughs> what about you, Chase? What, who would you pick? Oh uh, well, I don't know. I really like Frankenstein. I think he's he's super he's super cool. I've always just liked how he looked. What about so, a horror icon, Chase? Like, a, I mean, if it's horror icon, I gotta go my, my favorite. Ghostface. Ghostface. I gotta be Ghostface. I gotta Chase take is a cute, up the mantle, the, you know. Yeah, and uh, next week, you know, Scream comes out next week. We're gonna go see that. Chase is a huge Scream fan, so uh, we can't wait to go see that opening night. Can't wait. That's exciting. There's a lot of oh. good movies coming out this year. Oh, man, uh, in, in just March, look at the movies coming out in March, man. You got uh, John Wick's coming out in March. Um, you've got uh, Scream. I think there's a mo- like a great movie every week in March, and sometimes it's two great movies. Okay. There's a few. In, there's, yeah, there's a lot in June as well. So it's just going to be. Oh, dude, June, don't you have Indiana Jones and that new Transformers looks you amazing. Know, uh, the Beasts. Dude, that looks good. I, you know, I never really cared for the old, the other Transformers, like the 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 ones that they came out with uh, Shia LaBeouf and stuff. It was good. I liked the movies, but they didn't look like the Transformers to me, like the cartoon. Dude, they look like the cartoon now. Ever since Bumblebee, they're actually making them look more like the cartoon versions. So this one, you got the newer Transformers, like they look like that, and then you got the Beast Wars guys in it. Man, that's just. Ooh. Yeah, they're doing a whole reset with the Transformers universe. Yeah, I, I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't like those. I just, I didn't like the, I, the, the look of the Transformers as much. But I did like those movies. I watch them still. Oh, I mean, that's top of the line. Even today, man, you really watch it movies, and they don't age, right? They look great. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like that. And I, I already watched those the other day, man. The ones with Mark Wahlberg where the Decepticons, when they remade them, they would just turn into, like, blocks. You know what I'm talking about? When they would transform, they would just, mm-hmm. like... And I didn't like that because they didn't transform anymore. They just turned into blocks, and then, then all of a sudden there's a car. And I, I didn't like that. The updated technology. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah I was a movie coming out in March, and I'm definitely going to have a neural. Uh, yeah, you're uh, breaking up just a tad. No, shut up. <laughs> hey, Mark. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Frisky. What's up, Frisk? Hey, man, just wanted to say thank you. Uh, that that was really cool that your son is here. So I wanted to share you uh, this. Hey, Riley, say say hello to Mark. Hello. Oh, hello, Riley. So Riley, she's 10 years old, and earlier she was like, hey, Dad, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, hey, I'm going to watch uh, Mark Spears do a live drawing. She was like, oh, well, can I sit, th- sit and watch with you? So... She has been with me the entire time tonight, 
And so, hey, there is nothing like building the next generation. So I'm glad that your son got to take a part of this. I got to bring my daughter into this. So, hey, man, this is is really good stuff. And hey, Riley, hey, tell, tell everybody. No, you don't want to say it? All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say it for her. So, hey, we're, we're going to say welcome to the MonsterVerse. So, yeah, there you go. It, it's really cool to uh, share this experience with you, Mark. Uh, I really liked your story. Uh, you know, I share a, a lot of similarities in uh, you never give up. You just keep going. Um, that's something that I've I've always uh, kept. Uh, um, you know, in my life. So I, I, I certainly like your story. I can't wait to follow more of your story. I'm going to share with my kids as well. So everybody in the audience, before I get off, make sure that you're following Mark at his uh, Twitter. You can follow along with Mark, Mark Spears art. And then you can also follow along with him at his Instagram at Mark Spears art art as well so another thing is too before i get off march 15th gunslinger 18th is uh, 18 is going to be coming out and it's going to have uh one of mark's uh covers coming out and it's going to be of the clown and and his minions so make sure you check that out uh it's one thing to see it on the uh on the screen on your computer but it it's it's something special to hold in your hands so make sure you go to your local comic book shop buy all the uh copies that you can and then we're going to make sure that we uh post all of Mark's uh live events in the future and uh make sure you uh hit those not- notification uh button as well for Mark's uh uh, links and uh, follow along with this story. So I, uh, I'm going to let this thing go back over to the community. Mark, I appreciate you coming. Uh, I, I'm certainly excited about your, your live drawing, man. This spawn looks really cool. So uh, I hope uh, Todd and, and uh, Thomas get a chance to look at this as well. So wish you the best buddy into the monster verse. We go. All right, man. Thank you. Now, I tell you one thing, this community, dude, this is the best people I have ever met in my life. The nicest, kindest people. Uh, you know, just earlier when uh, I was at Raul was on stage and someone comes and helps him out. Dude, these are the kind of people I want to be around. Awesome people. I love all these guys here. All oh, you are great. Oh, man, I'm tearing up. Okay, I'll get back to this. Okay, next, next question. Somebody got a question? <laughs> Can you? I got uh, to drop my eyes, man. Y'all is my awesome. mic still bad? Yeah, it's still bad. You, Damn, it, it's better for me. Okay, well, figure fat. I know you've been waiting a while. Go ahead, man. Uh, hey, Mark. Um, I was just curious as we watch you draw this amazing piece. Um, when you when you go when you start out, do you have to do you use a reference? Um, not so much. I know you add your own little details and spin, but right. Do you need to to reference the character as you draw it to get his likeness and actual, um, you know, it, it look like for this? No, um, but or does it like, just come right out of your head? Like you know how to draw Spawn, you don't have to look yeah, at Spawn. This, this is why I picked Spawn. It's he's you know pretty easy. Um, Spider Man would be pretty easy um, if it's someone that I'm not familiar with. Uh, if it's some, if, even if this was a face, let's say it was somebody though I knew, mm, like let's say I was drawing Superman, right? It's got a regular old human face. And I don't really need it on that either. But now it depends. If you're saying, well, I would need a reference if I'm trying to paint it to where I knew where all the lights were, right? Uh, but if you're doing comic book style, like I, I, this is kind of comic book style. I, I really hadn't got to paint a lot of this. It would take hours to actually paint paint over this. But um, it would. Uh, I would need a reference of the lighting. Now you can kind of fudge that a little bit and pretend, and some people will notice. 
But like if you've seen those things on uh, Instagram where I've done people really love it. it's it's black, but so it's really dark, but there's a light like underneath somebody shooting up at them. I have to know how that light works, right? I can fudge it a little bit, but I kind of need to know where that light source is going to be. So I might take reference images of doing the same thing. I might put a, a 3D person in a 3D program with a light so I know how that hits. Um, of course, like Wolfman, that's a little different because of his hair. How is it going to hit that? So sometimes I, I fake it. Sometimes it's I don't have to fake it as much. And hopefully you can't tell either one the difference. I can. I can go, oh, man, I, I really sucked on that piece. Like this one's OK, but I, I see some mistakes on it. I'm going to try to fix the mistakes. Um, but on something like that, no, you don't need a reference. Um, but also on this, I've been doing it not thinking. Um, I'm sure you're when you're talking, you're you're yeah, you're there's a in and out of consciousness, if you will. Right. There's a, a thing about drawing you can get to where you don't even you know, I'm just talking and I, I'm doing this without thinking of what I'm doing. If you understand what I'm saying, like I, oh, I put that line there. I'm just my body's doing this, but yet I'm actually turned to the left screen over here watching like who's on stage more than I am drawing. So it's actually uh this is second nature, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, um the other night when we went to do signings, uh, I I don't really do sketches anymore, right? I don't do um sketches for people anymore and things like that. Cause I, I do digital stuff. But I mean I I can do it. Uh, I just don't really do it much. Well, that night, uh, two people came up with sketch covers, and there wasn't that many people there, and I wanted to do it for them, you know, for free. So I got it, and I just did it, and I was kind of nervous, like, man, if I sit here and draw this, and everybody's watching me draw, and no one's talking, I'm, it's going to freak me out. So we just, they started asking me questions, kind of like tonight, and before you know it, there's a spawn sketch on that thing, and it was done. Um it's it's just so weird. There was a time when I was uh, uh, 17 uh, and I was on my way to high school and I got pulled over by the cops, <laughs> by, by one cop in, in New Hope, Alabama. If y'all probably don't know where that is. Uh, anyways, uh, I got a, a ticket um, and, and I, did, I shouldn't have got a ticket because I was actually going the speed limit. It was like 30 miles an hour. And anyways, um, I got the ticket, but the chief of police was right beside me. And uh, that's, he's not the one pulling me over. It was another cop. Anyways, it was just a long list of reasons why I should not have got a ticket. Well, I fought the ticket in court in, in uh, New Hope. And they didn't hear me out. My dad took me down there. And it was a small little small town court. And that, I didn't even get to speak. They just said, no, nope, you're guilty. And my dad just stood up and blew up, was like, this is a kangaroo court, which I don't even know, I don't know what that really means. But uh, he does that, you know, and he started yelling at the mayor who's there that's like one of his friends. My dad is known around these parts. And he's like, I cannot believe y'all doing this uh, to my son. You know, why, why are y'all, you know, lying about it? he didn't have this ticket. Well, anyways, uh, my dad got home and got he was furious uh and said and he called up his lawyer and was like we're fighting this and then we're going to appeal it and i'm like wow i'm going to appeal it yeah this is like an 80 dollar ticket right maybe 50 dollars wasn't that much okay so uh we I, I think it's a couple of months later or something it's finally it's in huntsville now we're in a big courthouse in huntsville and uh that we got our my dad's lawyers there who uh took the case on he's like okay this is what's gonna happen they're gonna be a trial by jury right this is freaking me out man i'm like 18 at this time and i'm like man this is like on tv uh so anyways they go in there i'm just nervous and everything well they uh they get the the cop up there and he goes first they get him on the stand and he talks and says, uh, you know, yeah, I, I witnessed Mr. Spears driving, speeding, blah, 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 and, and all this. And then my lawyer gets on and says, but you don't even write down his right social security number or the right time of day. Like all the stuff on the ticket was like false. It's really weird. I don't know why this, what happened to this guy. But anyways, the reason I'm telling this, and then 
then I got up there. They they got me on stand. And I'll skip that part. But when we're there at the end and made me stand up, you know, and tell me the jury found me not guilty. We're walking out of the court and my dad looks over to me and I and I said, man, I just didn't know. And he goes, no, I knew it was over with. He said, right when they called you on the stand. Because and I said, well, how'd you know that they would do, you know, find me not guilty? He goes, because they put a pencil in your hand. And they did. They gave me a pencil or actually a marker, a dry erase marker. And I went up there and I showed them what had happened, like where I was, where the school was, where the chief police was. And my dad was like, you didn't, you weren't nervous anymore. Right when they put that in your hand and you went up there to that dry erase board, everything was over with. And I was like, well, that's, and that's, that's the way it is, is you, you do things, you're so used to doing it. It's like muscle memory. Um, I know exactly what to draw on these things. I've, uh, Spawn, I haven't drawn as much as other things, but man, I've drawn Superman in that one card set like 300 times over and over and over where you get kind of sick of it. But uh, I did that. See, right right here, I don't like what Spawn's mouth. I mean, it looks pretty good, but I'm, I'm going to make it a little longer. But I'm not going to do the old way of actually just um, bringing it down. I'm going to just blacken that and redraw it real quick. Well, thank you. It looks amazing. And uh, Dude, I appreciate y'all are liking this. This is I was worried. I was worried today. I was telling oh, man, him, so like, man, cool. I you think the, get up I love the details on the forehead. It, it's just I don't know. There's something about the forehead I really like. Because I know uh, <clears throat> you know I didn't want y'all to go, oh man, I expect him to do a nice Dracula or something. And he did this jump. You know, I didn't want it to be like that. I'm I'm trying to be nice to Anybody who takes the time that y'all y'all came here, man, y'all keep thinking me. Y'all y'all came here on a, a Friday night. Y'all could be doing all kinds of stuff, man. Y'all could be watching uh, Netflix or or uh, I'd be playing Fortnite or something. I don't know Fortnite. <laughs> uh, could be playing Call of Duty. Uh, there's a new wrestling game coming out. Ric Flair. I don't know if he gets if he plays, but I'm gonna get that wrestling game, man. In a couple of weeks. Ric Flair. I'm beat you in it too. The uh, what'd you say? Scully? I'm going to beat you in it, too. <laughs> oh, you're going to beat me in? Hey, I think uh, Logan Paul's in it, Scully. Yeah. You know that He's going to beat wow. it, yeah. So, yes, got to get that. I know Ric Flair likes wrestling, so he might like to get that game. But, um... No, yeah, thank I you. Cool. Xbox too. That, that's a good way to unwind when you're, when you're drawing and stuff. You get, you know, like, oh, I'm tired of doing this. I actually work probably too much sometimes to where I'm sitting too much. So I try to get up every every so often and walk around. All right, what can we do? I need to fix the chest. Okay, let's see what I can get off here. Appreciate you but, coming uh, up. But, but I, I like I said, you, uh, um, I just want to let you know. Um, you know, like I said earlier, I'm I'm embarrassed to say that I'm just uh, finding you now, but you have a fan. Oh, dude, for I, don't don't be because there's I, I'm getting fans now. I mean. No one knew who I was two years ago, really. No and I want to I really rip, rip some of the monster packs. Hmm. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, get some of that. We're going to have some more coming out this year. I'm going to make the best trading card series ever This that comes out this year. I'm going to have oh. more art than anybody's ever put in a card set. One more question. Yeah. Ask who's, your favorite, who's your favorite Star Wars character and why? <laughs> hmm. That's a big question. It's it's important to me. <laughs> I think I know you're the only answer. Oh man, I would you know I would I would say uh, I'd have to say Luke. That not not the Luke that uh, was in the Disney trilogy, but my Luke, <laughs> the real back. Luke, the real Luke. Um, I do. Really? I really like Mandalorian. I love, uh, of course, Han Solo. Man, there's so many good ones. Uh, I don't really care for any of the new characters that Disney showed, uh, really. I, I like Grogu, but uh, I, I I like, uh, oh, Darth Maul, man. Oh, Darth Maul's so great. Um, Darth Vader, of course. Um, that freak, so. so just yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big, big Boba Fett fan. If you could see, 
we might have to do a video one day to let you see in my office right here. I got a six foot Bubba Fett on the wall. It's one of those fat heads Ooh. from years ago. Uh, wow. I'm a huge Bubba Fett fan. And I would have said Bubba Fett, but I don't really like what they did with Bubba Fett in the Bubba Fett series, man. I don't admit, mean, I'll admit it. I don't like it either. I didn't. Okay, good. I, don't I didn't want to mean I liked it either. But I pretend that didn't happen. And uh, dude, I honestly, I prefer the voice of the old Bubba Fett and like, remember when he's like, he's no good to be dead and all that stuff. Uh, I like that. The original voice, it just was so good. It, yeah. Nothing against the, the clone guy's voice, but man, that voice was so distinct. I liked it. And I, I grew up him, with uh, it. That was Bubba Fett. Dad bod booba. Yeah. I didn't really care. I'm hoping they'll fix that a little bit with the, uh, they were saying he might show up Mandalorian. Uh, which I did watch Mandalorian, dude. Thirty minutes, thirty minute episode. That's a sitcom. What are they yeah, doing? I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there, man. I got, I got my popcorn ready. I'm sitting there ready. I, I sit there and hit that button. I'm like, oh it's man, over. Mandalorian. And, it was a good and, episode, though. It was a good episode, and I did like what I saw. I'm just like thirty minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping the other ones are more. I don't know why they would give you a 30 minute episode. It's probably like six episodes, right? 30 minutes, six episodes. Oh, like, no, no. I think it's eight. Eight. Ooh. Yeah, it's only eight. That's one know. thing I've never done is Star Wars stuff. Uh, oh, like, that would be so in, cool. I would love to see that. I would love to see some Star Wars. Stuff. I would love to see a Boba Fett on your Instagram. Dude, I, I have drawn it long years ago, but I haven't done any Star Wars stuff for any companies like Lucasfilm or Tops or anything, but uh, I can post, I, I might post that tomorrow on Instagram, the, the really? Fett that I did. I did a, a, a Kylo Ren right before Force Awakens came out. I think it might be on Instagram if you scroll all the way to the bottom. Uh, but I, again, Bubba Fett, one of my favorites, man. I remember I would buy the Mediacom toys back in the day, but before they was actually good toys, you know, before Disney took over um star wars you, you know i would get the imported toys of boba fett because they were so awesome the figures and stuff um but again oh dude i made this is before uh scully was born but i made i went on the comic book store my own boba fett armor out of uh, the, the helmet i got and just recolored it right repainted it and put the scratches and dings in it but the chest and all that uh and all the the knee pads the everything else um, I got from a, a what is it foam board and shaped it and melted it and then painted it and all that stuff. And so in the comic book store, you would walk in and you would see a life size Bubba Fett because I, I wore it when you're at Halloween, but then I put it in the comic book store for a while. And then somebody eventually offered me a lot of money for it, so I just sold it. But um, I, again, Bubba Fett might have been one of my favorite. Uh, how, uh, finger, do you, was you alive during the original trilogy? Did you see it when, or have you just watched it later on? Born in 77. The first okay. movie I so saw you're, was, you're, uh, you're, you're about my Empire. age then, dude. Do you remember the, because you're, you're just a, like a year or two younger. Do you remember the rumors at that time? They were, everybody was saying Boba Fett might be Luke's brother. And oh, no, that I made it even more intriguing, right? Really? <laughs> Uh, that was really cool. So in Return of Jedi, you find out, you know, of course he's not. But because of that one line in Empire, you know, where it says there is another, everybody kept saying, oh, I bet Boba Fett's going to be his brother. Because he, I mean, he just walks in. He just, he looks so different and so cool. And he says four yeah, lines. Scheme, man. That he's got color four scheme. lines. And yeah, the color yeah. scheme. I mean, the, just, when you see him all white, which uh, you can see him all white, uh, there's, they posted some YouTube videos of the, the first armor they made for. The uh, prototype. prototype, yeah, that looked okay, right? It, it mm. looked decent, but the colors, the choice of the green with the red and then the yellow and then the gray suit that's why I didn't really care for the uh, the the revamp of him with the black underneath. It doesn't look as, as good. I like it with the the gray, um, and hopefully they'll change it back and, and, and it back. back, yeah. Empire Strikes Back is awesome. Or the uh, Return of the Jedi Boba Fett is. Yeah. Is, Do you remember you since you're a big Boba Fett fan? Did they change? Did he change his color gauntlets in between those movies, or were they the exact same color both movies? 
Uh, I don't know. I thought you might know. I remember but, as a kid thinking one of them was red and one of them was like yellow or green or something. And then in the next movie or something, both of them were like red. But it might have been promotional or something. Yeah, I have I, figures I have that have that. green and then I have figures that have red. So then you see that I'm doing oh. thinking that if they did that, then somewhere in the movies, these they're a little different then. And then okay. the new ones are like silver. Hmm. Or they're they're maybe they're scuffed up. Right. But yeah, I'm surrounded by Star Wars collectibles, as I said. And um I bought a Boba Fett plush and a Darth Vader Hot Wheels car today at the Walgreens. <laughs> Dang, I'm down to Star Wars. Keeps growing. And- Mark, my wife's gonna kill me. <laughs> I, I like saw the, a yes. sketch. Oh, I know whose voice that is. Yeah. I don't even have hey, to. I'm turn gonna get off here. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, man. Thank you a lot. Go it, ahead. It's Mark. hard to miss my southern accent. It, my my wife heard you the very first time I did this in the other room. She she came in here saying, "Is he from Alabama?" And I said he's close. I said he's close. It's he's he's our people right there. I said uh, he's, he's close by. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. What I saw close? a sketch of uh, your uh, '80s cartoon villains. Yeah, and I saw a villain on there that was the greatest villain of my youth, Avenger. Oh, um, Avenger. Did you know they got an action figure out right now, Avenger, a target? They do. They do. Yep. And yep. I haven't picked it up, but it's it's on my short list of things to yeah, buy. I, I thought but, about uh, it the other day because it comes with Dungeon Master and stuff with it, but it's mm. it's just a little bit cartoonier than I want. I wanted to more a little bit more like the way I drew him, but they, they went yep. more like the, the cartoon version. But, dude, that cartoon – was just so good, right? I mean, it was it was a like, favorite. I I had showed that to my son, uh, not Chase, but my oldest son, uh, when he because they come out with like a box set on DVD uh, years ago, and he watched them all like in one night and was like, "Where's more? I gotta have more. I love these." And I was, he's like, "I was like, man, that's it. That's all they made." He goes, "Well, Dad, can you get me some action figures?" I was like, "There ain't no man. There's no action figures, you know." Uh, but now they've at least got the action figures. Would I would love for a live action movie based on those characters, man? Hank and all that. Oh. Yeah, I, I I I agree with you there. Now, would would that be? I doubt you could draw that and put it on a card because of rights. Correct. Yeah, I'm, like because uh, they would basically all those characters are. Um, copyrighted so yeah i can't yeah, really put that i didn't know if they were so old that they couldn't be or, or that they were no longer copyrighted or how that worked but man that would be great in your monster set because if there was ever a monster venger is a monster oh i thought he was like the, the bet he was up there with drag i mean um uh darth vader to me when i was little i mean because you know skeletor Skeletor wasn't that scary, right? Venger was scary. I mean, it yeah. was uh, so different. Mumra I liked, but Mumra was still safe. Venger was so scary, man. Where and, and then it turned out in the end, which they didn't film that episode, they didn't make it, but he was supposed to be Dungeon Master's uh son. Yeah, so, I heard that too. I, I wish I had a, they had made that episode, uh, but man, yeah, especially when he was on Nightmare. That was oh, yeah. a scary villain right there, and the the only the only thing scarier was Tiamat. Yes, and he was so scared of Tiamat. That's what was made him even scarier, right? When the villain that is just so scary is scared of something else. Yeah, like, yeah. He's scared of him so bad, and um, it. Oh man, the writing on that show was so good. Uh, I just loved it. I loved Dungeon Master. Uh, I loved, uh, was it Eric? Yeah, Eric was the, the Paladin, right? The one with the, mm-hmm. yeah, I loved, uh, and Bobby. I mean, there wasn't a bad character, man. And they, and the, wait, what was the wizard's name? The, uh, oh, uh, uh, Peter. Was it not Peter? Was, uh, the Bowman, right? Was the, yeah. 
Oh, what was the? Was the I'm gonna have to break out I, my. I DVD can't remember now, but that dude, he was so good. Uh, the 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 wizard with the the green hat and everything, and he yeah. things would come out of the hat, and you didn't know what was gonna come out. Oh, it's on really the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of it. Uh, Peter, Eric, Hank. Bobby was the barbarian. Bobby was the barbarian. Oh, man, I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank. And then there was uh, Uni. Yeah, Uni. Uh, God, wow. Now, see, you're going to force me to... I'm going to force you to go look at this. Yeah, I watch it. <laughs> But yeah, man, I'd love to see Venger brought back. I don't yeah, care I mean, if it's the for nothing, Dragon. right? I would love if I could get the rights to that or something, dude. I would love to see a McFarlane's Toys version of those characters, you know, because Todd does all that detail and everything. Um, that would be amazing. In your it, sketch, it, what I really liked was his eyes. You had yeah. the eyes perfect. Yeah, I tried to do it, uh, you know, little country because the the reference for the cartoon, you know, the we remember it a lot more detailed. The cartoon, you know, those, you know, dated a little bit, but it was. I tried to make it look a little bit better, but uh, it was again. He's great design. I love the uh, the the horn, uh, all that. It's just he's awesome. Yeah, man. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to get up on stage and talk a little bit about Venger because I, I looked at that sketch and was like, wow, you don't I've see Venger very I've often. Seen the colored no. version of that. Oh, I, I only did, saw the black. I did the, a painted version. Uh, I don't know if it's on Instagram. I might have to they are, just scroll back down. There was a painted version I did a couple years later because that was done around 12. Um, but I did a painted version of Venger with, with this, the same, same group. It's just uh, got Venger in it too. But yeah, you're right. He's right up there with Darth Vader in my opinion. Oh yeah. I mean, and, and even being a cartoon, which, you know, he's not killing people really, but he just seems so evil. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, you're my people. <laughs> there you go, man. I appreciate it, man. Look, look forward to... to, to okay, well, I'm going to get off stage again. All righty. Appreciate you coming up, She Spawn. Oh, yeah, man. I'll hop off the stage, too. Sounds uh, good, Chase. It's nice I to meet have, you. Uh, one last thing to say, not a question, but it is really cool to see you working on uh, Spawn stuff. Because um, it's cool to see how like everything's connected. Because I love I'm big uh, thing for me is Mortal Kombat, and recently Mortal Kombat had Spawn in the game, and I was playing Mortal Kombat today even, and I was playing a Spawn. It was so cool to see how my dad is connected to that character, and to see it also featured in something that's so dear to me. You know, I just want to say that, Aww. and uh, it's cool to see. I appreciate you, Chase. Yeah, it, was, it was good to meet you, Mr. Spears. <laughs> good to meet you, too, Mr. Spears. And thank you for having me up here. Of course, anytime, man. Appreciate you coming up. See ya. What's going on, Kobe Jack? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for uh, having me up here. It's uh, inspiring stuff. Um, just listening in, just random stories. You, you never know, like, what kind of impact it can have on people. And um, it was just <clears throat> very insightful. But... Uh, my question is um, in regards to maybe a more like a professional professionalism kind of thing. What um, what do you recommend? Like, do you do you time manage your stuff? Like, how how do you balance your day to day when it comes to like uh, working on client work or practicing drawing or you know how, how do you split up your day in that regard? Um, that's a good question. Um. Mm, normally, um. Normally, I don't have any work <laughs> to do. Like, so basically, it's my stuff I'm working on, right? So I work on it all day long, right? You know, I might take break, go eat, 
run to town with my wife and, you know, grab food, something like that. So, uh, and then, you know, if I do anything, because again, you got to think, I don't want to sound like I'm a workaholic. I love what I do. If you told me, like, there's been days where I go, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to draw right now because, you know, I'm, I'm hurting because of my, uh, you know, my eyes or something, right? Because I've just done it too much. I hate being it because, oh, man, what could I be creating right now? You know, what what could I be making? You know, oh, I could, I could be doing this and that. Now, the stuff I don't like is the stuff where the behind the business stuff where I'm having to do the like the artwork's already done for the cards well now i've got to do i've got to go in and save 100 files of every card with this you know uh with the logo on it you know put a logo on it and then i got to go back and i got to do the same thing but i got to touch up the the colors and make it all red and all this stuff and then i got to design the back of the card i don't really like doing that stuff as much um i like the creative process it's the, it's the most fun to me uh, if I do have another job, so like, say like when I was doing the spawn covers, I just did the spawn covers at that time. Now, if I got to where I, I was like, whoo, I got to take a break from spawn covers, I might go work on some of my own stuff. But um, I don't really have that much other work that the, they're giving me. Now, I'm not, I don't want to make it sound like, hey, I don't have no work. No one's giving me none. People do offer me projects, but it's some things that I don't want to work on. Like, um, like I could probably still do some cover. I did, uh, I did Vampirilla. If, if y'all ever saw that, I did a Vampirilla cover for a company. Uh, it was a exclusive. Um, now it was a store exclusive. I did that. Well, then they had me do Red Sonia. Didn't really want to do that, but I was like, okay, you know, I'll do that. Then they wanted me to do another Red Sonia. Then it was another girl character. And I was like, okay. This is not really what I want to do. And, you know, it doesn't matter about the money on that. I don't want to sit there and be known. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I like drawing, you know, sexy females and stuff like that. But I don't want to be known as like just a, a pinup artist, if you know what I mean. Like uh, I got I got more stuff than that to offer, I think. So I don't want to sit there and just draw females all day. Uh, so I, I turn those down. Um, and then there's like uh, somebody will ask me that's you know not a big company. Hey, will you do this? You know we need the, we need this for this thing done, or we we have this for a Kickstarter and we would want it. And I'm like, um, I, I'll think about it. Does it you know why I take this project or that project? Does it you know advance me at all? Is it challenging at all? Is it is it better than what I'm doing now? Uh, spending my time to do that and. It's probably not, so uh, I'll turn it down. Now, like if you know, come if if they ask me to do a spawn cover tomorrow, that would probably take over my schedule. I would do that till uh, it depends on deadlines though, but I would probably just I would be too excited to do it that I would go ahead and do it. I would just start laying it out, which might take a day or two to figure out what I'm going to do, what characters I got to do, what pose I'm going to do, and everything, and then the then the actual art process, and then revisions and stuff like that. So I would just hold off of everything else and do that. Um, now, like when when you I did, were, uh, oh, go ahead. I was just saying, like, uh, say they approach you tomorrow and they're like, "We want to spawn cover." Like, how many uh, how many hours you would you allocate for something like that? Um, it depends, like how hard it is. You don't. Sometimes I don't realize how hard it'll be until I get into it. And I'm like, oh man, like clown took. Uh, you know, because I'm, I, I want to say I'm fast. I, I mean, I, I, I try to tell, tell people I'm fast, but that took uh, weeks. But, but it's also stops. It's like I turn it in, right? I can spend a whole day, twelve hours doing it, and I send it in. And now it's the waiting process. I have to wait until Thomas talks to Todd. Well, Thomas might have an opinion, but he wants to also talk to Todd to get his opinion. And then they write me back and say, okay, these needs to be, this needs to be changed. Well, they might be two to three days later. So then I need to go ahead and move on to something else while I'm waiting. Um, so in all, how many hours? I don't know, but it took a span of like two weeks for, for clown, just because we had to redo it. We had to, uh, 
that was really hard because the art references, there was hardly anything there for the little minions uh, when they, when they wanted their new minions and not the older minions. Um, and then there was a problem. Like, I think I, I finally nailed it. We had it done and I turned it back in. And then Todd said, they all don't need to be having the same hairstyle. So I think in the end, one of them has a mohawk. One of them has like, their hair is like kind of flat in their hair. And the other one is like the way all the hair was until I changed it. So revisions like that might take an hour. Uh, it depends what's painted around it. Like something like that. Like when somebody goes, hey, you got to change the hairstyle. That's tough when you've already got it all done, right? Uh, even though I do on layers, you know, it might send me back to layer 13 where I did the hair and everything is built on top of that. I can't fix it like that. So I really have to just redraw those parts and recolor those parts to match so it all blends together. But um, work-wise, eight hours a day, maybe, maybe longer. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really constantly working. If I'm not drawing, I'm getting ready to draw. Like, I'm, what am I going to draw? Am I working on the story for the comic? Am I working on a character? Am I working on how something's going to be laid out? Things like that. But um, that, that's basically how it goes. Uh, now, when, like, the Spirit of Halloween poster, when that thing happened, uh, and it's a, you're, you're always um, the hindrance to, if that's the right word, to the company, uh, because I'm basically having to wait for their reviews, and they don't get back to you, you know, in an hour. They might wait a week because so many people have to chime in, especially with that. You had every producer has to chime in, and then the Spirit Halloween Corporation had to chime in. So, um, but they want their stuff immediately, right? They don't want to wait a week. I got back from uh, Disney World. And I just got back. They said, it's a go. We need that ASAP of Christopher Lloyd's head. Uh, that's the poster we want to go with because I gave him a few samples. And we need it immediately. And I just, on the way back, we drove to Disney World. On the way back home from Disney World, I got COVID. I realized. And I tested positive. I was feeling horrible. And I still, the next day, I finished that cover in one day. Because they had to have it. Um, and I still think it looks good. The thing, though, was I was able to do that because I already figured out what uh, Christopher Lloyd's face would look like. But here's what happened with that. They, on that poster, they only had him for shooting for one day. And no one thought to take a photo of Christopher Lloyd. So, you know, there's usually on movies, there's continuity photos. Where they'll take a photo, just go, okay, but they didn't need that because he's only in like one scene. So they come to me, say, this is what we want, Christopher. No, they, at first they were just saying, like, we, we'd like Christopher Lloyd somewhere on it, blah, blah, blah. This is what we want. What's your idea? I said, this is my idea. They said, we'd like that idea. Okay. And then I was like, okay, where's the reference for Christopher Lloyd? Oh, we don't have any. And I'm like, dude, I got to draw Christopher Lloyd with no art reference. And they're like, now, and then I started looking for references online, right? You got, he played Back to the Future. He's played in so many things. But I need him in a similar pose, a similar expression to what I finally ended up with. And there was none, right? You couldn't find any like that um, because of his age and that expression. They said, oh, but he's got such a good expressive face. I turned some of them in. They were like, nope, don't like it because he doesn't. He's not smiling the way he should, and he doesn't look the same way we think he should look. So what I ended up doing is really weird. I don't know if I'll ever have to do this again. I drew Christopher Lloyd's face with hardly any expression, right? Then I took it into some, I don't even know what it was, what app I took it into on my phone. I took a photo of it. And it's that app, you know, that, oh, the app that can age you, face app. And I made it make him smile different ways. And then I, I took that image and took it back in there, made him smile again, right? Bigger and bigger. And then I sent like 10 pictures to them. And I say, pick the expression you want. They picked it. Now, I said, I know it ain't going to look right, but you get me similar to what I need. And then I, I can make it look like it. I'll, I'll paint it right. They picked it. I painted it. 
they approved it. I didn't have to revise anything on that. But that was the preliminary. So when I got back from Disney, I had to redraw the whole thing. I had just given them like a sketch of it of how I would do it. But uh, that was very interesting on on the Christopher Lloyd thing. I, man, that you, drawings a, a, a famous person without any reference uh, to what they're going to, you know, because there might be a side reference, but I'm drawing him straight on. I need a straight on reference. I don't know how far his eyes are apart, how big his nose is. So really, if you look at that poster, I, I got it on uh, Instagram and other places. Um, it might not really have the uh, Christopher Lloyd's measurements, really. I mean, I, his eyes might be too close together, his nose. But I did, did the best I could because of what I had to work with. But it looks like him. No one ever said, who is that? <laughs> so it, it worked out. Uh, really interesting um, perspectives I, I like here and stuff like that, where it's like you, client never provides what you want. So you just kind of have to make it up. And it's like, well, why did yeah. it take so long? It's like, well, because I had to figure out what his face, how I, far his eyes were apart. You know, it's like that took extra time. <laughs> um, but uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, one last uh, question. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, like, let's say you've been just grinding all day, right? You're, like, at a 10, 12-hour day of just drawing, drawing. Um, you're reaching your end of your day. What do you do to, like, creatively recharge um, your yourself? And, like, how do you, how do you kind of keep that, uh, that, like, positivity up? Um, To take a break, like, to get away from uh, um, drawing, um, I don't like that. Let me get rid of that. Um, what I do is uh, Call of Duty sometimes. My brother plays every single night Call of Duty. Every single night. is my older brother. He always wants me to play with him. Sometimes I'll go on there. Shooting people really clears the head. Um, then there's uh, sometimes I'll, um, I'll just sit down and do Marvel Snap. I'll do it like doing it on my phone, man, just like hurts my eyes, though. Uh, cause I had to read those things. So I, I, I play sometimes on my iPad. Um, and that just like something that is using my brain, but nothing like what I've been doing. Um, that doesn't really recharge my batteries though on, on drawing stuff. Sometimes like right now, uh, when I was doing, uh, okay, I was like doing some detective stuff for my story about mm, a couple weeks ago. So, uh, I was drawing some detective pages and everything. So when I took a break that night and I was like done drawing for a couple of hours, I was like, I want to watch something with detectives in it to make me understand that a little bit better. So I like watch seven again with Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt and to see what, uh, how that worked. Uh, I watch a lot of YouTube sometimes uh, if I'm not watching a movie, you know, I have my favorite TV shows, go watch Mandalorian and things like that to get my mind off things. And, uh, I've been watching that season three Picard and I didn't like the other seasons, but this one's not bad. But, um, I, so I watch TV shows, but um, sometimes I'll watch YouTube videos like in my living room and I'll watch things that still pertains to work, but it's kind of fun and enjoyable where I'll watch like, you know, what makes a perfect villain? I've watched so many of those, you know, to hear these people say, this is what you should do to make a great villain. This is, you know, in writing, which that goes along with, you know, drawing and stuff too. And then I'll watch, you know, cinematography, how they lit a scene, how they, how they uh, lay out something, why, why this person's closer to the, to the viewer than this person and things like that. Um, so I, I do that, um, but it's still kind of work, but it doesn't seem like work to me, I guess. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, I do watch things like with my wife. I'll go and, you know, she'll say, let's like, we've been watching like Outer Banks, things like that. You know, like, let, let's watch something that's just like that. Uh, so that's, um, no, that's, uh, no, I get what you're saying, like to kind of kind of pull your brain or turn your brain off, but still kind of um, pull inspiration from the world. Yeah, around. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to cool down, wind down. Sometimes I watch TV in bed, you know, and I've had to, and I'll be like the same thing. I'll be like, Hey, I want to see this. How, how do you do something like this? Or, uh, I love documentaries, uh, love documentaries on film, or like, you know, how this movie was made. And that still kind of pertains to what I do, but it's different. 
Uh, I love true crime stuff, uh, Dateline, uh, anything like that. I like crime thing. I watch that stuff. Uh, and that's really away from what I'm doing, uh, but that's enjoyable. Um, I watch, uh, but like on YouTube, I watch things about um, comic books. And I'll, I'll, I'll watch an interview like with Todd McFarlane or, uh, I'll you know, if it's an artist I like or something, I'll look them up and, and see what YouTube videos there are of them talking and stuff. and. Uh, learning more about the process of how they do something, but um, that's about it. I, uh, but yeah, again, I, I probably work a little too much, and I probably need to to unwind. But like I said, uh, you only live once, and no one else is going to do it for me. So I kind of want to get it done. <laughs> I want to do everything I want to do, and and I right now I really want to get the comic book done. I really want to get these cards done for this year because. Uh, people are wanting it. And if you got people who want to see your stuff, you really want to go ahead and make sure you get that stuff done. So, and I, I, I try to learn too. Uh, learning when I'm not working is, is huge, but that's, that's kind of what I was saying with documentaries and how to videos and stuff. But um, I try to learn uh, new, th new things that I can pick up and, and appropriate that to my, my work um in different ways but uh it is important to wind down and like i said sometimes i just want to do dumb stuff like uh you know xbox you know and not not have to think about nothing so uh, no I, I totally get that um you know it's a good way to connect with some of my older friends too and and kind of you know just reconnect to people that you don't normally get to gaming is a good uh, yeah. um okay so one last question let's say Tomorrow, um, you're not allowed to draw anymore, um, right? You can't do art anymore. What would you uh, do with your life instead? Um, man, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I'm trying to think, because, you know, I've thought about this before. Like, what if, you know, what if tomorrow my eyes start getting bad, right? And like, not just glasses bad or something, which I don't wear glasses, but what if, you know, they were, you know, where I can't do this because, you know, I have to be able to see to do it. And um, uh, I don't know. I, I, if I couldn't do this, but I still had the, my skills of that I still possess, I would, uh, I would love to do something with movies or something like that. Um, but I, I wouldn't have the opportunity to, I mean, they, they're not knocking on my door or saying, Hey, Mark, uh, you can't draw anymore, but we would love to have you direct this or, or, uh, you know, do this thing for this or something. But, um, you, you know, I know what I would do. I would write, I would, I would do, I would be a writer. Um, because I did some of the, again, in the comic, some of the comic writing I did as a, uh, cause at one time I was thinking about writing a, like a fantasy novel and I did, I did write some pages of it and some of those characters from that and some of the dialogue will be in the comic. Um, I enjoy writing to me. Writing is as enjoyable as, as a drawing. Um, it's just not as you know visual. Um, so I think I would do that and I could, you know, I could self publish. I could do it. Um, Am I good at it? I don't know. Uh, you, you just don't know how good you are at something until if other people enjoy it. And I don't know that yet um, because, um, again, I didn't know people would like my style so much. I haven't. My style of this stuff hasn't changed, but yet people are finding me now and and enjoying it. Um, so it's it's a thing where you would ask me a couple of years ago, are you good enough? I think I'm good enough to to have work, but uh, why aren't you getting work? I would have said I have no clue. I don't I don't know. Um, I wasn't sending no submissions out to people anymore though. But to me, if you get a package in the mail for me, you probably ain't gonna open that. No one does that anymore for jobs. You know, like magazines and stuff. They don't go, oh, we got a package from a. Uh, Spears, let's open that up and see what it is. They more now today, it's more of a digital 
world to where it's an email or it's like that we don't want us uh, you know your samples unless we ask for them you know things like that so um, yeah, I remember when I first had to send out um, demo reels when I was graduating college I had to um, write them to DVDs and send them to like every single place I wanted to work and it was like such a hassle <laughs> but like it's what, so much what do, you, what do you do are you uh, uh, do you film uh, what do you do uh, yeah, um, I'm an uh, effects artist. Um, I specialize in uh, like magic and destruction and um, like special effects for post production and film. I know uh, some effects artists, um, uh, uh, artists effects makeup guys. If you know, uh, if you've studied them, see, I watch those kind of videos. I watch oh, stuff that you do. Stuff. I love spe- like corridor and all that. You know, all the. Um, I mean. Uh, is it corridor? Yeah, the where they'll get guys on and look over special effects. I love special effects. I'm pretty good at After Effects because uh, I, I try to learn all these programs. You never know when it'll help me with something I'm doing, right? And then when I did uh, earlier, I was talking about I wanted to do a movie one time. I was going to do all my special effects myself and everything. It's a similar to what I do here, but um, I know I know some of those guys. Uh, they follow me. Uh, that do some practical effects, monster makeups, and stuff like that. And dude, that's a great career. I, honestly, th- that would be something I would love to do like that. But um, there's a lot of people, you know, in that field. For me to get in something like that now, probably you know too late. I don't know. But uh, I love that stuff. Any kind of special effects. Uh, uh, scene extensions, you know, I love that stuff. Uh, I think I could do great at that. I can try to, I can make something look realistic in Photoshop and, and do set extensions and stuff. Uh, and I know about tracking and all that kind of stuff, but, um, that's a great career, man. I, uh, hopefully you'll go really far in that. Um, but I, I watch those demo reels, dude. I watch that. I love watching special effects demo reels on YouTube uh, and see that stuff. Um, I would love to, if you ever want to send me a link or something on Instagram or something, I'd love to go watch. If you got something online, I'd love to go see it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I, I've been working um, in, in 3D for almost uh, like 14 years. So um, okay. like when you're talking about like After Effects and stuff, like uh, that was all kind of, um, like my start, you know, I, I wanted to be a character modeler as well, but like, like you said, it's, it's a tough industry. And like, there's like when studios hire people to do that work, they're hiring like maybe one or two people to do it. They're not hiring yeah. teams. And so it's, it's very competitive and difficult to get into that. So that's kind of why I switched over into effects because, uh, it's a little more technical and, um, blowing shit up is cool too. So, um, yeah, there you go, man. Um, but yeah, I, Again, I love that stuff. Uh, it's it, it's it's a tough industry. Uh, I like uh, I love video games and stuff. And that was a little. Th- I thought about going into concept art on that, but there's a lot of great concept artists on that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's I inspiring and also like soul crushing a bit every time you see it. <laughs> yeah, like- I mean, I like watching them videos, and then I'm like, I, I'm done watching videos of fantasy artists on YouTube because then I sit there and go, what the. I mean, how are they doing that? I mean, like that, man. So, um, I don't know. I, I switched from doing a lot of uh, just pencil and ink stuff to my bright colors and all that kind of stuff. But one, because I liked it. And then I realized people like that better. I get so many more people that aren't in the comic industry or don't like comic books and stuff. They look at that and go, wow. Because if you show a person who likes comic books a penciled sketch, they go, wow, that's really cool. Because they understand what the process is. If you put a penciled sketch of something on Instagram, I get, I I did a spawn sketch. I thought it was decent. Got like 100 likes. I put a thing on there of something color. I don't, Frankenstein. It could be anything, really. Maybe 1,000 likes. Because people, people that aren't comic book fans, they like that better because it's finished to them. That's like the, the you know, it's eye catching. They go, wow, that's great. So that is when I noticed my stuff really changed is when I went in that direction, I started getting more eyes on my stuff. Uh, so that's why I, I kind of switched over from doing just 
regular traditional comic book style. Because again, there's so many people in that field doing the exact same thing to where I was trying to do something that's not the exact same thing. And that's that's where I think I I uh, made myself a little different, at least. Cool. But uh, yeah, that was kind of the, the same with me. Is I felt it was like a a different kind of niche that you could I could easily more easily make money in. So um, that's kind of why I shifted. But uh, it's interesting you said that you know line quality or just black and white images didn't do as well because. Um, it's so funny because yeah, the comic industry, the variants and stuff are so sought after those like black and white sketches. So it's like it's funny. Yeah, that really, so different. Uh, they the, the Virgin covers. That was another thing. The reason I don't want to do covers like exclusive covers to stores is they. I got I get a Vampirella cover. Oh, that's a, there's two more reasons. One. I'm thinking, oh, man, it's cool. I like Vampirella. It's, it's a monster kind of thing. That'd, that'd be great. Comes out, virgin cover. Every single thing I did, they made virgin covers of it. So it's just like a print to me. It's not I got Vampirella on the top of it or Red Sonya on the top. So did not like that. Second, I recommended to the person, hey, go with this cover it, it looks good with the background, everything. I drew the fire. I did all this detail in it. It will sell. And I told them, I said, if you don't trust me, I will pay half of the sale of the of what it costs for you to make this cover. I will pay it out of my pocket. And uh, I said, because I trust it that much. They went with the white background. Yeah. <laughs> And they, they didn't say no, Mark. They just didn't tell me went with the white banner. Uh, another reason was, um, okay, what was it? It was the, the Virgin cover uh, and the, what was the Virgin cover? The girl, there's some other reason. Um, but gosh, what was it? It was, uh, oh, they also wanted me to do, um, what's that thing? What's the word called? Homage covers. Dude, that is, the field is just saturated with homage covers now, right? And I'm just, like, that's what they kept telling, we'll do this and, and we want it to be this pose. And I'm like, dude, you're you're limiting me. I'm trying, I'm going to have to do Vampirilla in this pose when I could. So the second cover, the Red Sonya, where she's like got a dragon that I drew that and she slayed it. That's the one that they went with the white backgrounds of my fire that they're supposed to. Um, that one, they did not want me to do. They had told me to do the one there's another red sonya cover where it's a homage to like red sonya number one white background of course and i did this on my own and i gave it to him and i said look this is better let me do my stuff and this will sell i promise you and they messed it up by putting the white on there and so i don't want somebody to tell me hey you got to do a homage to do these exclusive covers i forget it you know i ain't gonna do it is that why you uh, do all your own stuff now? <laughs> so you Basically, I mean, uh, you know, because I, I'm like, I'm not going to do exclusive covers to, but these were store exclusive covers. And also when I did it, I thought it was a store and I'm not going to, I'm not saying nothing about, about the store that I did it for. They're great people. I'm just saying, I thought it was a brick and, a brick and mortar store, like a real, and it's an online store. So that that kind of hurt it a little bit. I was like, "What?" You know. So really, no one's go, can walk in there and see it on the rack. And that's the way I draw my stuff. I want it to be eye catching. When you see other covers, you'll go, "I want that." Um, so that kind of. But I, I don't want to do homage. I mean, I I would turn it down if 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 a comic company comes and says we want you to draw this, but it's got to be an homage to Spider Man three hundred. I would just no. I've seen how many spun how many McFarland cover homages are there, right? Not McFarland doing, that's fine. But the other guys that are still at Marvel and DC doing them, I don't like those. Um, I don't own one of them. But uh I I would now if McFarland said, Hey, would you do this homage for Spawn? You know, that's different. He's the guy that did it. That's a different story. But uh uh, basically, they're just trying to capitalize on another artist's work without giving 
that artist compensation, that would kind of tick me off, right? Okay, same thing. What if, okay, what if my clown cover for um, uh, Gunslinger turns out to be kind of like uh, people love it, right? Like they they like it a lot. And then next year, somebody homages it from Marvel with Kingpin or something. I ain't going to get no money from that. I mean, I might get a little thing at the thing after Spears, but it's like, what's the point of that? I don't mind that they take the pose. Let Do it. If you can do it better than me, do it. I don't care. It's just... Why? why? Why wouldn't you be better off doing your own pose, you know, for a cover to make it better than than just trying to do the same cover? I, you know, I think it's a money grab, you know, but I could be wrong. It's also uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So, you know, if, if well, now, you do- I, yeah, I'm I'm all for imitation. I, when I learned to draw, it's drawing. Uh, Dude, I got so many Spawn, I mean, uh, Spider-Man McFarlane ripoffs that I drew. They look, you know, trying to look like Todd. And then uh, I would, any artist, I try to emulate them, right? I would try to do the same poses. I would try to do the 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 style. But I've, I did find, which they would tell you that. They would say, look, you'll be better when you develop your own thing. And that's true. You, that's when you you when somebody can look at your stuff and go, well, that's a Mark Spears. That's when you know that okay, I did it. I've, I I kind of got to where um, I need to be because uh, I would I would draw make Marvel. Actually, I think I told the, 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 the people last time Marvel. One of the Marvel uh, submissions editors when he called me on the phone uh, was saying, "You draw your you draw your faces like McFarlane and." Uh, and they were like getting on to me, saying like they didn't like that. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay. And I understand that more now as I get older. Uh, I try, I try to draw like Jay J- J- Campbell. All these great guys. You're always going to imitate them. But what's the best thing to do is mix those, right? Mix what you like about this person, this person, this person, this person. Leave what you don't like about what uh, with them, and that's what you need to do. You know. That's what you need to become. Uh, and that's what the greats will tell you. Um, I can tell McFarlane when he first started out, you can tell the influence uh, Art Adams had on him and John Byrne and Neil Adams. Um, you can see a lot of that in his early work. Uh, then what he did was made it his own, though, where you don't see that anymore. Is You just see Todd stuff. Um, so that's, that's my thing is uh, you're, you're better off – uh, not doing that as much anymore. I just don't like, like homage covers. Then I'm just again. We talked about that earlier. Don't pigeonhole me. Let me if you if you're gonna be a great boss to me or something. If I'm working for you, let me do what I do, and then you can tell me what you don't like about it. But don't tell me like don't do these colors or we don't want you to. We want you to do these. You know this pose like this other person. The very first image comic I ever got. My first professional work. Right. Ultiman number one uh, for Image Comics back in like 2000, uh, probably 2001. I drew it actually a year or two earlier. It just didn't come out till then. And what they saw my stuff online. They saw me draw a Shazam versus Superman online. Gary Carlson uh, writes me, says, got a job for you. Ultiman is a story in there, but you can't draw the way you draw. And I'm like, what? And he's like, you need to draw in Kurt Swan style. Can you do that? I said, I could draw on anybody's style. I mean, I just look at it and I can mimic it pretty good. Um, and he's like, okay. So I, I showed him some samples and he goes, yep, that looks just like Kurt Swan. And that's what the job. So the very first work I ever got as professional, I couldn't even do my own style. So, but it was work, you know, I got, I got published. And uh, it's it's a neat little book today to to look back that that was been about twenty one so years and now I finally and I didn't get to do the cover by the way because it was an like a anthology a couple others a couple stories in it so I finally got to do my first image cover. This uh this piece is coming along really nice. I like some of the subtle kind of hatching that you're adding to um, everything. It's really making certain things pop. Um, 
Uh, yeah, know. now this is this is my what I call uh McFarlane calls it doodles. I just call it my junk. I'm just throwing a bunch of junk on it. Now what I would do if if I was gonna paint this for hours is I'd still do that. But watch I'll do this is I would um I'd go over here, go to my mixer brush, and this is my special brush that I have, and then I would take something like this this cape so that's just a hard line that's more like a regular old comic line right so i would sit there and blend it to where now it's going to be you know it's not a because paint when you paint something you can't have these lines like that but uh i would paint it like like this and make it uh go together so you're still adding those shadows you're you're creating the depth you're making the, the texture for it but you're uh you're actually making it now look like not um, uh, 2D art and actually more 3D. I mean, yeah, like 3D uh, realistic more. Uh, and you would go in there and I would spend time making the uh, the cape actually look more real. Um, but that's that's what I would do. I would blend. It's basically blending stuff and getting everything there. So this style, what I'm doing right now is more like that, but it's without the blending and it still looks good i i think i i i mean i think it's decent either way i mean i uh i don't i don't think that's bad but i uh i you know wouldn't mind one night i might try to we'll do another one of these and i'll try to paint something uh or have it halfway done or something we talked about that but i want to do something from scratch tonight so yeah. let's give this some the lights i'm along really great um uh, just one last question. It's really hard to answer, but um, like, how, how as you an artist, do you decide that your piece is done? Um, like, how, like, is it a time thing, or you just you kind of feel it? Um. Well, I always heard art is never finished; it's abandoned. That's what they they used to tell me, and I think it's true. You can overdo an, a piece where it's just you've done it so much and you're like I, I overdrew that and i'll have some nights where i uh have drawn something and i go to bed and i wake up the next day and say what the heck did i do to that i hate it and uh so you can do that um and i'll go back and fix it and you know what a lot of times it's me like removing about 10 layers and I'll, I'll go back to where I thought it was good and I'll fix it. Normally you, you get the confidence to where you go, okay, I'm going to do this enough to where I can just quit and I'm, I'm happy. You, you got to have the confidence to go. I'm not going to overwork it right now. I'm just chilling and, and enjoying myself. So I will, uh, probably overwork this one just because i'm having fun but you just want to have the confidence to quit and say look that's done um plus you again you can just overwork it and see i would uh add my texture i haven't done that yet because i can't really work with the texture on there uh but see well let me zoom up so if you add my paint texture which i usually have that see how much better that looks now with the with the canvas um oh yeah tasty little details oh yeah and you know uh the one of the tricks that i uh, do that canvas is it hides so many mistakes for me and that way i can that really changed my work when i started doing the canvas it freed me up to where I was like, I'm not worried about people. see Because, look, you can zoom in, right? You can zoom in with digital. You can zoom in so big. And I was afraid, like, man, people are going to zoom in and see all my mistakes. But with Canvas, it kind of hides your mistakes a little bit with, with the Canvas thing I put on there. So, like, let's look at this. Okay. So, to me, which I might just be, you know, uh, OCD or something. But uh, if I look at this. I go, man, I got to go in there, right? I would be, uh, this would be what I would do before uh, I started doing the canvas thing. I would go in there with a small little brush. I would go, oh, man, man I got to fix this. And I would go really small. 
And I would tighten everything. See, in this black, I would uh, go, oh, man, I got to fix this. I got to have everything, right? It's got to be crisp. We got all that, right? Let's forget that. Let's go back. You throw that on there, it just looks finished more. It, high, it blurs it a little bit. Like right in here, it blurs out the, the black a little bit. So it may, And this right here with that canvas looks great. It looks like a paint mark, right? It looks like, oh, that's his edge of his paint. So, you know, it's a little thing I've done to where it's helped me. Um, hopefully no one else copies that and it'll just be mine forever. But um, the I, I love the, I, I, everything I do now has that. See, I don't like that. Right when I turn that off, I hate this. With that on it, I go, that's mine. That looks good. I turn that off. Oh, ugh, looks like I threw up on it. I don't know. It's just me. But uh I'm telling you, it hides mistakes. It makes things look more more purposeful. Uh, but if you're an artist out there, no, it doesn't look good at all. Don't use it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. In uh, 3D, we always um, add add grain on to the to the um, yeah. shot at the very end, and it just kind of like makes it a little more set into like imperfections and stuff. It makes it look a little more real, even though. You know what? I learned that from that when I was doing, uh, was studying that, right? I learned uh, when I was editing video and stuff, I, I messing with After Effects uh, and stuff in Photoshop. I learned, well, the grain helps, well, one, hide your mistake, help blend things together, right? I learned a lot from that was when you're, when you got uh, one clip and the lighting was one way and the guy didn't fix it and you got the other clip and the lighting's totally different, you know, and it's, you got to color grade this now, you got to fix it. Those are the things I, I apply when I'm doing this. Uh, so I can, I can recolor a whole image. Um, I don't like to give away all my secrets, but look, I'll like, I'll show you guys. Blow your mind. Let's see. Uh, so let's say I'm going to have this and let's go. Um, I need to write a book one day. I, I do want to have a how to draw book out one time. The good thing help. about sharing your secrets is it requires you to get new secrets. Exactly. That's true. Oops. Uh, hold on. I got to do this right hand. Oh. Okay. Um, Let's go with a color burn. Um, so you can, colors is huge. So see, like, like this is what I've been painting. But once you turn this on, now look what happened to the greens and the, the reds a little bit. Okay, so this is where my bread and butter is, I think, is, is the colors. So I can go in here and fix these colors up. See, there's the, it muted the green a little bit, brought that out. Um, it still kept that red there. And what is that? That's just a, a color burn of 33%, and it changed it a lot. Now let's add my filter of that on there. Whoa, that looks like a colorist colored it. Well, we can even fix it beyond that. We can uh, sit there and let's see. I'll copy, merge, or paste. I mean, I can actually take a drawing. Say this was finished, which I don't know if I'm, I'm finished, finished, but say this was done. I would sit there probably, I could sit there an hour messing with the colors too. It's just perfect. Like perfect the way I want them. Uh, now they might not always be right, but uh, I love turning my vibrance and, and saturation up. That's just a given. Of course, that's all right here. It's just going to be, it's going to really increase the reds and the purples. Um, now you can mute it. Looks pretty good. Uh, another thing you can do, and a lot of guys will do this, they will actually, um, let's see, will we'll draw and paint uh, black and white. And the reason is adding the colors on top. So if you go to that, um, and then let's take the greens, and you highlight the green, right? Okay. So we go back to this image. I don't know if I like that. Let's let's see. We'll do it like that one. This one. Yeah, let's go with that. So I'll go with this one. Um, Pays. Then I'll have to see what that looks like. So let me go with uh, color on top of the black and white. Now it looks totally different. This is what it was before. This is what it looks now. Well, what happened? Well, it changed the greens. Uh, the reds changed a little bit. The purple lightened up. Um, and now I could go back in there 
and color it again. So that's a, you know another layer and everything, but I'm I'm putting on all these layers of color to where eventually, dude, it just the colors pop. The you know and I'll, I'll do this with paint. Um, and let's just uh, go with this. And and uh, let's add a little, little color around that to make it look like his eyes are glowing. Mm. Then blur it. Then I could, uh, I mean, there's just so many tools in Photoshop. And there really is. And there's other programs that are good too. Um, kind of like linear, but I don't really have set rules. I mean, I'll, you know, especially if I'm, it's my monster stuff and I can do whatever I want. I'm like, no one can tell me what's right and what's wrong. So I'll just do whatever. And like I said, I'll, I'll spend hours on trying to figure out what colors I want. And then, uh, I'll show you another little trick I do. Let's say, yeah, let's, uh, we'll go with that right now. But see, I can always go back. If I go like, I don't like any of this, I'll go back about five layers and I'm back to where I was. Um, this is something I do sometimes. Okay, so you take this and now you're going to change the hue. So let's do that. Let's see. Uh, let's get a good um, blue, blue would probably work. Uh, purple purple oh. the red better so okay this is what i'm gonna do all right so you take that but now we want to uh let's see you always want to just check through to make sure you haven't this like sometimes i'll do this and i'll go through and i'll be like oh, dude that looks amazing you know something like that and i'm like and i never intended to, for that right See, that don't even look bad. Um, I like that. Uh, so you just never know what actually might look good with, with what. So a lot of times I start out one way, and I think this is going to go this way, and it actually goes a different way. So let's go with, we're going to act like purple was one of our original colors it was going to do. So let's say there was purple on the, don't want on the right or left side. Say it's on the left side. Okay, and I'll go in here. And then I'll just get rid of all this. Okay. I don't know, I've got too much red in that. There we go. So now I've just created more color from just doing a, a hue saturation, oops, um, like that, right? And I didn't have to even use my tools to color, just erase. So let's see if I like that. We can go down a little bit on it. Create that, and then I think I want. I think I want to color that darker. Uh, does anybody got any more questions? It's got quiet. <laughs> We're just sitting here mesmerized. Falling asleep. <laughs> Let's see what what color sp spawns a native color besides black would be what dark purple, dark blue, or is it just artist preference? I don't know. <laughs> I guess, we, yeah, we do have some questions from the audience. When did you switch to digital painting? Like, when when was the, uh, the big switch? I started doing digital uh, around 2014, uh, just a little bit, not, not all yet. Um, and then I really did it when uh, I got my Wacom. I was doing this, though, in 2014 and stuff, doing digital. I was doing it on a tablet where you're drawing on this thing, looking out, sitting on my couch, 
10 feet away from the TV, had my TV hooked up to my computer, and I was drawing with a pen with a, it had such a slight, like I would draw a line, and then 30 seconds later, the line shows up. And you got to think the tablet I'm drawing on is not a tablet. You see something. It's just like a mouse pad, right? So I learned to draw. (laughs) I learned to go digital that way. Um, And then, uh, so when when you gave me a Cintiq, when I got that, man, I'm like, oh, man, I can draw good with this thing. So I learned to draw that way. Uh, Before that, I was, okay, for about a year before that, before I could afford the uh, little tablet thing, which is only like 30 bucks that I bought. I mean, it wasn't really very expensive. Before I could afford it, I was drawing with a mouse digitally. Yes, a mouse. That's uh, tough. Yes, but that's the only thing. But I I was just just messing around. I wasn't doing work that way, but I would do do it that way because that's the only way I could do it. Uh, and I knew that digital was neat, and I had to I had to color stuff for uh, my Marvel statues and stuff, and I did do it. I did it with a mouse uh, back in 2006 through eight when I was doing those statues and Batman concept art. All my Batman and uh, Marvel stuff uh, was colored with a mouse, which I don't know. Maybe that's what they do now, but man, that was tough. I hated it. I would ask them, can I just color it with markers, scan it in, and then touch it up? No, we really want it digital. Uh, And so that's when I learned uh, that I needed to do that. I was just out of of touch. Back then, they would say, yeah, we want this rendered in law. And I was like, what does rendered mean? (laughs) And and I didn't even understand what they was talking about. Uh, And they was like, you don't know what rendered is? Um, But so that that taught me a lot about uh, digital. Um, and realizing how fast it is. Mm. Wow. Let's see. That looks, that's cool. <laughs> Oops. That, that just adds so see, much. It, you think that's it's one so way, and then all of a sudden I hit a switch, right? It's just yeah. weird. Huh? Wow. Those are some cool colors. <clears throat> uh, hey, what's up? Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, no, no, don't worry. Yeah, I just wanted to join the stage because I felt so related with uh, Mark what was explaining about the process and all that stuff, like uh, kind of experimenting with the uh, hue and saturation and all that stuff. And yeah, I don't know, just to make a comment to to complement the explanation to Colby Jack, uh, Mark says something very important about uh, how's, when, when, I mean, when it's the moment when you when you decide that uh, your artwork is finished, oh, sorry, I'm walking through outside a bar. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you hear some kind of music. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, about the process, I, I, I think that that happens to me that I'm considering like an artist in development right now for me, and I'm still learning a lot about uh, workflow and all that stuff. So I think the moment that you can decide that your uh, your artwork is finished is when you feel happy with it, considering the mood, <laughs> maybe the day, also the hour <laughs> that yeah. you are considering yeah. it finished. Because as Mark just said, maybe you're going to wake up the, the next day and uh, the, the piece is going to look awful. <laughs> you know, maybe you're not going to like it. Maybe you're going to like to change maybe the background or the color. So yeah, experimenting or I have some fun with the, with the hue and saturation because also I did the same with, with this moan, uh, with the pop-up. And yeah, I, I think the, the, the best um, suggestion is to define your workflow or your process and to, to choose a limit for each piece. You know, so uh, as we can see, Mark is doing uh, some tests with the colors, but he's not not changing the the character. You know, he he already right. finished maybe the character. I don't know if he's adding That's more detail. That's the yeah, I'm kind of done, yeah. Yeah, the, you, you have the, the character finished and you're making some special touches on, or, or, yeah, trying some different stuff on the colors, which, by the way, it's looking amazing <laughs> with that oh, variation. 
Yeah, it's looking amazing. So yeah, I, I just wanted to to join the stage because uh, while I was hearing you, I felt so related about the OCD thing <laughs> in the the cape. <laughs> Because if you zoom in and you see a, a little pointy uh, black dot outside of, of the white line, or I don't know, whatever. Yeah, you, yeah. you, you, you can spend hours in those details. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, th thanks for what you share, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah I'm just adding some touch to that. Uh, the hours mess me up. Uh, oh. Homies, in, uh, someone actually has a question. If there was a private owner that was trying to purchase a piece like this from you, how much would you normally charge for just a, a good, solid drawing from you? Um, well, I don't really do commissions anymore. So I might do that more, um, but I don't really do it lately. Um, I might try to, but like, let's just say like a... Because that, that is something that's not really talked about, and I I don't mind talking about it. Because, uh, like, what what would I? Okay, so something like this, I might say digital. It depends how long, but like, I could really probably have this done earlier. I was just you know, I'm just having fun. So let's say I don't know digital. I used to. Okay, let's just say I would draw something like this in color ink color 11 by 17 or 10 by actually 10 by 14 and i would sell it on ebay and i used to charge 100 bucks or 100 yeah about 100 dollars. of course that was a couple that was probably 10 years ago um it that would be if somebody wanted something like this done uh for something like a job or an action figure background something like that i would probably charge depending on the project because i kind of know like if you come to me and you're a small company you ain't got a lot of money I'll, I'll, i might go lower like maybe 500 for an action figure back or something like that um uh I, I took low i'll just say less than that for the spirit of halloween poster because there's certain jobs i will take less because i know they're more important if you understand what i mean they're more important yeah. in the long run for exposure uh what happened with uh spirit of halloween they spent their budget already right they weren't they were going to get their in-house digital people to do their poster but the director and me uh kind of knew each other from someone else and he reached out and my artwork was already in the film so i was so grateful for that right i didn't pay a thing they 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 loved my stuff and then he asked me and i was like yeah and i i i took very low for that because uh dude i got to go to the movie premiere and all that kind of stuff and it was such a great thing and i, I got my name twice in the credits on the movie and all this and it i would honestly i would have done it for zero dollars uh, there's certain jobs like that. Um, how much do you do for a comic book page? You know, people will ask you these questions and they don't want to share it with other people. So I don't know. I haven't done any comic book pages yet. When I, when I did Ultimate number one, I got paid zero dollars for that, I believe. Uh, maybe 25 a page. I, I don't know. I don't remember cash, no checks. When I worked for Disney, I mean, D.C., I did get checks from Warner Brothers. My bank would not catch them. They thought it was a joke because no one around here has Warner Brothers checks. So I had to wait uh, three weeks for my check to clear from Warner Brothers Studios. <laughs> so that was weird. But um, I think um, the, the but for other prices, uh a comic book cover, I, I couldn't really tell you what I would charge for that. I haven't had that many to do. I know there's some people that can live very wealthy or very easily by doing just comic book covers, so they must be making a lot on them. Um, but that's not me. I don't. I haven't reached to that point yet. It's also that, too. Like, how much are you known and you can charge more, right? Yeah, um, it's a reputation. I, yeah. And I know some people, and I, I don't want to say who they are. So I know some people who can charge a lot more. And I know some people that would do a cover for free because they need to, they need to get out there and get their name out there more. So it's, it, it's, it's like that. So, um, 
like yeah if you have if you definitely if you've not been in the game a while it's hard to kind of gauge where you would charge but price yeah. is all relative you really can just kind of throw a number out there and if it sells it sells yeah i i wished the the business of drawing was more like this is what we got now some companies do that they will say hey mark this is what we're willing to pay you i love that come at me with that i hate it when they go how much do you want and you're like oh man i don't know because what if you say too high right and they go thank you we're going with someone else right so I, I I get nervous about that. I would rather them say this is what we got. Then I could sit there and go, well, I really would, you know, you know. And I'll tell them I will say like, well, this is my normal rate, but I'll take this if that's all you can do, and it usually works out. But um, I don't know. I just uh, I, money th stuff is tough in in the. Uh, in jobs it's, yeah you're just trying to draw art yeah because i you know i wish they would just pay me a fortune and just let me do <laughs> it's uh you don't want to yeah you don't want to insult anybody you don't want to make it too you know uh too high and you don't want to make it too low where they think well this guy's crazy if he's charging those rates he must be horrible so it's tough. I, I really don't know what to tell people on that because I had to, I've looked it up. I'm like, man, what are people charging nowadays? Because am I, am I, you know, if they ask me for this, I, I honestly have no clue. And then sometimes they're like, oh, but uh, oh, I had one company, man, was so nice. They, they wrote me about doing a book cover. I did it. They said, uh, hey, we changed our mind. We're going to go with a different concept. And I guess someone else, they pay me a kill fee, which is amazing. That means money you get, even though they didn't go with your stuff. And the kill fee was about half or no, it was almost almost the same amount, maybe 75 percent. So and then I got to keep the original artwork to do with what I want. Right. Because it, it was kind of like original character kind of thing it was animals That's or something cool. so uh i'm like it's a win-win i got paid i got to keep the artwork and and then all that so that's something yeah, that's a good gig. yeah negotiate is a kill fee i don't know if a lot of people do that 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 wasn't a comic book that was like a book book so i don't know if they do that in comics i know you can get royalties in comics i've never got one i'd like to get one someday but uh you can get royalties um in comics so and that i heard is is great uh you can live on that for a while but <clears throat> all right so this is a, a colorful spawn yeah this is a looking nuts i've never seen these colors on spawn before but i'm digging the purple yeah i think it uh, works out it kind of looks like my stuff i think people kind of know that it's me um yeah. Let's see if there's anything else I need to do this thing. Uh, a signature. Yep. That's for sure. Definitely. Then people will for, for sure know it's you. Then they'll know it. Yeah. Go with, uh... People like the good old John Hancock, too, so don't be shy. Yeah. Okay. I'll make it big. Oh, yeah. There we go, man. That's a beautiful piece right there. Oh, I'm going to add my, my layer. Now it's, uh, I'll zoom up in on it for you guys. Let you see it. Wow. What a night. You tired? Is that, is that a, was that a quick draw session for you? Or you, you could easily go another five, six hours? Oh, dude, I'm, uh, this is my warm up about, <laughs> about, I'm going to probably go, uh, take a break, get a drink or something. And then, uh, then I gotta. I'll probably work until about six doing my uh, comic stuff. Yeah. So you going just all night? That was my warm up session. Wow. Oh, are you a night owl? Or are you just you just like one twenty four hours? That's crazy. Um, I don't mind. Uh, no, I'm. Uh, I'm. I get up about. Uh, I get up about one o'clock, twelve to one to two a day every day. One around that time. So I go to bed around uh, five o'clock every day. Five to six depends. You know, if I'm really busy doing something, I might stay up to six or seven. But um, wow. that's how 
how I roll, but uh, it's quiet at night, and I'm, I've yeah. always done it ever since I was a teenager. Uh, after high school, I would draw at night uh, when my parents were asleep. Um, so I, I kind of do it now when, when everybody else is asleep. But I, I can I still do it during the day. I just don't do as much. Can you? Uh, I don't know how you get that? Can you hit save for me? <laughs> Give me anxiety. <laughs> oh, no, oh, dude! I haven't saved this all night. If my thing, uh, that's true. <laughs> you know, I gotta save it. Good uh, call, Kobe Jack. Dude, I, I know it because you know it won't save in Adobe, Adobe Photoshop unless you gave it a title of your last uh, ten minutes or something that auto save or something. So let me. Okay, hold on, just a second. Here, let me be right back. Y'all see that screen? Let me go ahead and do this one. I don't know what's uh, see if I could. So that's just my tools over there. Um, because I don't want to spoil any comic pages. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll call this spawn. Uh, odd key. And save. All right, now there we go. It's saved. 